Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Keep It A Buck podcast, the only podcast where we, where do. we do something different. <laughs> yes! No, it's the only podcast where we do things the same every single time, man. I think we're in the same positions as always. This looks pretty familiar. Tings is back there. That's pretty familiar. We're on playback. That's always going to be the case. And we're sponsored by Prize Picks. He's on fire. It remains the same, man. Nothing, nothing changes but the date on the calendar and sometimes our underwear type shit. Um, I got the guys here with me. Sage, how you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. Fresh, fresh underwear. Um, fresh out the gym. Almost just completely missed the pot, but it felt like a Friday. Fresh underwear and you fresh out the gym. This nigga is lying. Fresh shower too, nigga. <laughs> no, okay. mm. Well, it's it's a it felt like a Friday, bro. It felt like a Friday, man. So I hope y'all having a good day out there. It did feel like a Friday. I literally have not done anything all day. What do y'all think that fresh. is? I had the same feeling. I just didn't want to say it. I don't know. I was just like, damn, I feel good today. This is a slow period. It's it's not a lot to really be like ah, stressing about. I shit. think it's because we did a pod last night, an emergency pod. Yeah, you know maybe. I think that's what it is. Only on playback. We did an emergency pod yesterday. Um, Damo, how you doing today? They was cooking you. I ain't gonna lie, my guy. They was cooking you in the comments. Um, I haven't even looked at the comments, but for shits and giggles, I'm gonna look right now for okay. the first time. Let's let's see. But my day was great. My day was cool. Um, cool little day. Fun little day. Got some announcements coming up. Can't wait for that. But yeah, I mean, announce them. We here now. Nah, nah, I'm announcing them on my stream tomorrow. Mm. Oh, yeah. Tune into the stream. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have said where I'm announcing these announcements on my stream tomorrow. Kick. Only oh, Jesus Christ, you know. <laughs> Only on Blade. No. <laughs> <laughs> but let me go ahead and he's having a boy. So what? Yeah, sorry. Predictions, predictions, chat. He's having a boy. Oh, are we doing predictions? <laughs> I find out in like two more weeks, actually. No. Oh. Let me find out. Now I don't know what the announcement is. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's not a baby announcement. No, no, no. Double girl. Crazy. Twins? Is that huh? what <laughs> I'm going to say? Double girl is crazy. That's why I thought. I'm like, I don't know what double girl is. Nigga said triplets. Relax. I got the ultrasound. It's only one in there. It's it's just one. I know that. It's just one. Everybody thinking, yes. What's the announcement? I ain't got nothing. I ain't got one. Mm. Wait, what? Guess what's the announcement? Shot in the oh. dark. What this announcement is? Um, that was my only guess. Mm. Fuck it. Are you switching Fuck platforms? It. You streaming on YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not switching platforms. No. Making a platform. Making a platform. Low key. Oh, I think I already. Is this something you already told me about? No. Oh, well, oh my God, bro! I don't, I, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll tune in. You got me. All right, you got me. <laughs> called DC. I'll be naughty game. Making you know, yeah, he's making his own PC called DC. Uh, Damo's choice. Okay, I feel it. Um, Damo's Beast choice is crazy. How you doing today? Doing good, man. Doing good. Energized. Took like three naps today. You know what I'm saying? Bring me to come home now. <laughs> yeah, now nah, she's on her way. Her flight got delayed by like five hours. Um, Dang. yeah. Uh, they would have been better if it wasn't snowing out in uh, April, <laughs> fourth day of April. But um, yeah, right yeah. Five hours. What, what, what time is she gonna land? Like midnight. She was supposed to be here at like nine. Hell no. Nah. And you gotta go get her. Nah, uh, her job got her a, a ride, like a not an Uber, but some some local. Like, like a from the city to yo to your house. Yeah. Damn, that's far as hell. That's far as hell. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, well, <laughs> we've never seen this nigga. <laughs> no, but I, I know, I know he don't live. I know. Well, relatively speaking, I know how far he lives yeah. from the city. That's kind of yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's yeah, crazy. Good. I'm for a ride sharing service. Because you imagine taking that? It's like a. It's probably like a hundred dollars, ain't it? Yeah, but she's being reimbursed. I have taken an Uber though from here to Boston. And that was the day I found out Ubers don't know where you go until they pick you up. <laughs> and he got a little pissed when he found out where he needed to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes they'd they be like, where are you going? Hour? 
<laughs> ah, f- <laughs> no. I felt so bad because I didn't know. I thought, that, okay, I got to drive him here. Accept request. Nah, they don't know until they pick you up. Nah, I, I don't feel bad. <laughs> but I just don't remember right. if it's hour past. He explained it right then and there. Yeah, I don't know until I pick you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he said, then you got to cancel within the first five minutes. <laughs> and you ain't cancel. Okay. Six minutes later, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's crazy. He definitely said he was only. I never knew that though. Uh, I knew DoorDashers had something like that. I never knew Ubers was too. That's some whole shit. It makes sense from a business perspective. <laughs> yeah, so there's no cancel because you would you would never get a ride. Like if you was telling yeah. them you was going, yeah, you would never get a ride. That's fucked up. I'm gonna have to you just know do that. Exactly would be cheap. <laughs> And I might have to change the destination when I get in the car. Um, anyway, if you're new to this, you want to be true to this, make sure you hit that join button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that comment button. Make sure you follow us on playback. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Make sure you uh, hit us up on Cash App. Make sure you hit us up on PayPal. Uh, make sure you hit us up on Telegram. Follow us on the new Twitter page. Follow us on the new Instagram. Okay, IAB underscore pod. Okay, IAB pod. Okay. That's Leave it. us a five star on audio as well. Leave I'll us read one right now, real quick. Audio. Yeah, be this so. Is, Take it away. This is a five star uh, review from Hashi Work. Um, I've been keeping up with this podcast since around episode three of the first season when you guys used to have Justin, Tim, and Wordu as part of the cast. Where I listen to mostly the audio version since I'm at work most of the time, you guys are streaming. Um, oh my God. Okay, this is like three paragraphs. But um, I'm going to stop right there, man. Appreciate you. We- <laughs> He said uh, the dynamic change, I'm I'm paraphrasing now, the dynamic change when Sage and Omar came, you know what I'm saying, it's been better ever since, word of mouth does indeed work, considering I put a few of my friends on, but uh, yeah. Okay, I thought I was going to take a turn. Um, Listen, I got a a little call call to action, Uh, there's a little tweet that I put out, apparently they're looking for podcast openers um, for the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast when they have a podcast tour. Look, these dates are coming up pretty quickly. Um, how they're going to make it to Atlanta and to Charlotte in the next day, I have no clue, but that's not important. Go there. They said like, retweet, engage with this tweet. Engage with this tweet. Get as many reposts and comments as you can from now until April 14th. We have 10 days. I don't even necessarily know if we want to be on there, but, you know, why not? Get us the offer at least. Right. <laughs> get, get, get us the offer to turn down. <laughs> Waste their please. time potentially. Please. This nigga is insane. Bro. What you mean? I'm insane. You can't have options stop or damn. Yeah, I don't that's know. real wealth right there. If you ask the you know the right people. so we can turn them down. <laughs> but the one percenters, I want to know Mona. I'll make her moan. Uh mm. <laughs> Listen, let's get to the WWE story of the week. Oh, wait. He's on fire! We got two. And I know Cruz is probably already pissed. He's going off script already. <laughs> Stop breaking the fourth wall, bro. We are breaking the fourth wall way too many times, bro. God damn. <laughs> He's going off the script. This is crazy. <sighs> and then I know uh, Caleb going to be like, well, did you ask him in the meeting? <laughs> Did you, did, you, did you ask him in the meeting if that's what he wanted to do? <clears throat> My bad. These days are long as hell. All right. Um, WTF story of the week. The Atlantic says, because I don't know if y'all know, last night Malachi Flynn had a 50-point game. Who is Malachi Flynn? Um, I think he's Irish. <laughs> Player for Detroit Pistons. They are in hell right now. Last couple of days of the season, just trying to see who's going to stick around, who gets a chance in the league. Um let me show you a picture of Malachi Flynn. Play a little mini game while we're reading the story. Is he black? That's the, that's the mini game. I think I know the answer, but you tell me. Mm, after I was that Hardestown situation, I don't know. This is Malachi Flynn. Is he black? I was shocked when I found out Jason Kidd was black. So <laughs> I always thought he was just a white man. I don't know. Look like Professor X, especially. Well, lock, in your, lock in your answer, Beasles. Um, I'm gonna say he's 
uh, biracial, but partially black. Yeah. Sage. I th- mm. Nah. Nah. Okay. Tama. He has a black grandparent or great grandparent. Lock me in. Uh, I'm actually gonna take a, a different approach. Uh, I'm gonna say he's Native American. Don't really have the real answer right in front of me. So, so this new one, I did that stuff. I did that stuff. He's about to pull up Malachi Flynn family tree. Like, uh, well, uh, actually, we'll never evil know. DiVincenzo is crazy. Work. <laughs> that's what that's what Josh Hart called him on their podcast. He called him Evil Dante. Um, all right, so Malachi Flynn last night, Detroit Pistons point guard, scored 50 points. The first time he scored 50 points in any game, any any basketball game of any level that includes a video game. Uh, I, he said he almost did it in high school. I had 49 and my coach took me out. I still have a grudge. Um, in 2K? <laughs> well, uh, he, he said, uh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, the points... Oh, these are his points in his first game. Malachi Flynn is the third player ever to score 50 points off the bench, joining Jamal Crawford and Nick Anderson. Nick the Quick Anderson. I know most people don't remember Nick Anderson. Um, Out of those three, who is the best player from those three people? We done with the 90s, so I got to go Crawford. Uh, Give me Malachi Flynn. Well, give me Nick Anderson. I think he took. I think he had a lot of jump shots too. It wasn't really like a. It wasn't a whole bunch of. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, getting into the free throw line and all that stuff like that. Yeah, it was an ethical fifty. Ethical. Trey Bag Talk. I seen BDS post about him. That's how it was ethical. exactly what I'm when talking I seen, about. When I seen BDS talk, when I seen BDS retweeted, I was like, yeah, it was ethical. I seen 18 for 25, and I was like, was it like that for real? It was ethical. Um, okay. Y'all ready for this? This is the parent reveal. All right. <laughs> this is actually what we want. This is the real WTF story of the week. Black or not, chat, you have your answers locked in. These are Malachi Flynn's parents slash family. Mm, the jury is still out. No, I think this is that. Yeah. I think it's black. Yeah, that's his pops, <laughs> GG's. There it is. Yeah, Which that's the pops, GG's. Malachi Flynn? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie for a second. I'm like, yeah, which one is he? <laughs> like, it's, it's one of them two. He beating the G, uh, the 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 what's his name? G Easy, the logic allegations. He beating the logic allegations. Boy, I tell you what, huh? <laughs> he not he not as I mean, his daddy looked black and his siblings look black. He looked more black than logic. So, doesn't so logic dad look black though? My I don't I don't think that's logic's actual dad though. Oh, <laughs> you think it's a paid <laughs> actor? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's a stepdad. I think it's a stepdad. <laughs> you think it's a stepdad? Yes, I think his mom got with him when Logic was like six months. Nah, that's Logic bad for real, but it's not I really think, his dad. I think again, well, well, she did say that. Ah, oh, you know, I kind of don't know who that is. Trotted him out there. Um, I would pay for to have a black dad. Anyway, let's not get into that. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, since we're in Damo's arena, we'll start with Gilbert's arena, right? <laughs> uh Gilbert Arenas has been on a roll like butter this week. Um and I try to watch sometimes, but I really cannot get through it. We're in the dog days of the of the NBA season where every single day they feel the need to talk about the MVP case. They just they love talking about the MVP case. Um and so Gilbert Grape. Uh, was on Nightcap with Shannon Sharp, and he had to say this about the MVP. Now, I do understand when they say this about Jokic. Jokic is probably, statistically, when it comes to overall game, the worst MVP winner. He's the worst MVP winner in the last 40 years. Why do you say that? When you're talking about MVP, Statistically, wait, Sage. Outside of first and second place, their teams was first and second place. The people who won the MVP, their teams was first and second. When now I do want. <sighs> yes, Sage. That is why he's statistically the worst MVP. Yeah, I'm about to say, am I fucking high? <laughs> <laughs> am, am, am I a little bit more than that? Is this shit too tight? Bro? Oh. 
Well, take it there's, a little bit more. there's a little bit more than that, but what? essentially you're saying um, a majority of MVP winners, they had um, high-ranking teams, first, second okay. seeds. And then he goes on to mention the ones that didn't um, were the Michael Jordans, the Russell Westbrooks of the world, who, you know, they, they weren't on those top two teams, but they were putting up crazy stats. You know, Michael Jordan was putting up 36, 8, and 8 or whatever he was putting up. Russell Westbrook had the 30-point triple-double. And he's saying because of the fact that Jokic in those years did not have a top four record in the league, what he was doing was not statistically impressive enough for him to win those MVPs. So, therefore, he's the worst MVP statistically. I find I let me, let me tell you they find a new way to hate on Jokic every. I, I, being honest, I feel like it's I feel like it's Luca and I feel like it's Jokic. They find a new way to hate on these guys every day. I, I really, honestly, they're getting extremely creative with it. So I do got a round round of applause for the creativity. Round round of applause. Because because I just never sat back and would even. Think about that. Like, I know they got that from apparently uh, 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 an M- uh, NBA exec. That's what they say. NBA exec says Jokic winning third MVP is not going to age well. What does that mean? What could that possibly even mean? That means we have to scale him to other all of favorites where he has three MVPs. And LP is not in the top ten all time. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm glad you said that, Sage. Three-time MVPs and two finals MVPs if they win this year. Would be LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Kareem, or yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and Magic Johnson. Is is he in the wor- Is he the worst out of that list or category or whatever? Yeah, he's I, awful. I think people are genuinely starting to get uncomfortable with how good Jokic is. Cause like the 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 he doesn't put up historical numbers argument. I was talking about it in my video today. I'm like, okay, let me look at these numbers, right? 26 points, 14 rebounds, 8 assists on crazy efficiency. Name me how many players can put up that stat line in NBA history. Wilt? LeBron? <laughs> I don't even think LeBron's done that. Like, he, he's a guy putting up 26, 10, and 8. And winning. And is efficient. People, people are genuinely, I feel like, getting uncomfortable with how good he is. Yeah, for me, um, first things, all, I just find this whole take ironic. Um, statistically, I it, it's been explained by you, explained by the clip. I haven't seen the entire podcast. I know there's probably someone stuck in Gilbert's arena that would say that he explained it better on the pod to each his own. Um, from what I've heard, from what I've been told, yeah, that, that don't make no damn sense. Um, I don't need to talk about how just eyeballing – Jokic's two MVP seasons comparing to others, you can easily find better, worse statistical seasons. So there's that. And then there's also, uh, pardon me. And then uh, most importantly, I find it ironic though, because isn't Jokic the guy that he only has praise via statistics? I thought that was the thing. I thought the thing was Jokic is a guy where you just don't watch ball and you come up here with your well actually stats and all these guys on Twitter that never hoop before are talking about things that they are familiar with because you can talk about stats. You can't talk about something you haven't played. I thought that's what it was. I thought even as someone mentioned in chat that stats were made up for Jokic, but now he's the worst at that. Yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. It's just complete inconsistencies. Considering even if that argument was well put together, according to the full episode, I'll go watch it offline. But even if his argument was well put together, combining that with other past arguments that he has made, let alone everyone has made about Nikola Jokic, yeah, that just doesn't make sense. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to hold you. Um, As soon as I heard Gilbert Arena say, it was the worst MVP ever won. I knew it was going to be full of shit. He's racist. He doesn't even like foreigners. He thinks all the Euros should be out of the NBA. So anything he says when it pertains to a European player, to me, for now on, invalid, doesn't matter, is going to be dumb. And then if I waited another 30 seconds, my suspicions were confirmed with it being something dumb. Um, makes absolutely no sense. Uh, it, it's, hey, man, Gil's trying to get that shit off. I feel it. Somebody got to be the bad guy. Why not? Why, why not it be me? I feel it. Let me introduce another point in this because it's, it's it's loosely tied, but I want to uh, introduce another one because, like I said, they find a new way to hate on these two every day. 
Gil found a way to hate on Jokic as well. I mean, not Jokic, but Luka. Jason Tatum damn near can't be an, uh, uh, a superstar because a 25-year-old can't make it uh, win a championship. He's a young kid still. Is that we're not talking about? He went to the championship at the age of damn near 22, 23, 24. And then you have Luke over here, who's compared to Michael Jordan, and he's James Harden. He's literally James Harden, right? A dude who scored a lot of points. Don't play no defense, right? But we we see what they did to James Harden, who didn't play defense. They let the world know he didn't play no defense. They let the world know he was a one-sided player. This is all he do. He's just a stat. Luca is considered the next Michael Jordan. The Michael Jordan who played defense and offense. And we have one-sided where we play, oh, one-sided. Well, we know what that looks like. That's James Harden. Can he say he's better than James Harden at scoring? Can't even do that. They can't even argue. You can't even argue that he's a better scorer than James Harden in that same category. But he's considered the next Michael Jordan. Who and said I can't that? Put his ass oh, in Larry Bird. Is- Make the argument: Who's better, Larry Bird or Luca? Luca. Um. Here's the thing. Let me get shut the fuck up, then. Oh, I thought he's done. Mm. Yeah, the answer is Luca over Larry Bird. Um. B- besides that, um. Here, here's my thing that's ironic about that argument as well. James Harden, at one point in time, if we're going by that comparison, if the Luka and Jordan comparison is valid, I think we all were there for James Harden hype. Yeah, (laughs) he got that comparison too, buddy. So even if we're going to play dumb, dog, James Harden had that same amount of hype. He had the same amount of, hey, you might, Kobe, Jordan, James Harden's coming. He might be better. So, So first off, there that goes, right? But then secondly, why is Tatum not a superstar, but Luka is seen as a superstar? Again, context matters. It's not just about who goes to the finals and who doesn't. People are unimpressed by things Tatum has done, valid or not, because we're not really discussing that. Valid or not, people have been unimpressed by certain moments in Tatum's career versus with Luka, we've pointed to, wow, this nigga has nobody. (laughs) Time in a timeout, time in a timeout, time in a timeout. And even then... People point out the flaws. Even then, people like yourself will sit there and say, Luca can't get it done. Luca's a choker. Luca's a stat guy. All these other things. So it's just unironic that he probably saw one tweet called Luca Jordan, even though people call Anthony Edwards Jordan, but you don't hear him bringing that up. <laughs> don't hear anything about Anthony Edwards being Michael Jeffrey Jordan, and Luca's done more than Anthony Edwards. But that's besides the point. Ultimately, at the end of the day, even if we had to play dumb and everything Gilbert said was 100% correct, they did it with James Harden. So unless you had a problem with that too, which you should, I don't see what the issue is. I don't see why it's such a conundrum. My thing would be, I don't like the way he's throwing the name James Harden by saying he's just a, he's just a James Harden. Awesome, I, I, I think Gil may forget when we're talking about in the 2010s for the game of basketball outside of LeBron and Stephen Curry, who had a bigger impact, especially on the later years of the 2010s. Nigga, James Harden, the reason why the gather step, the reason why niggas is getting real, real iffy with what's a travel, what's not a travel, what's a carry, what's not a carry, step that back. shit is because of James Harden, the double step back, the, hey, now you have all these, these basketball trainers on Instagram, exactly. is this a travel or not, and they're hitting some ridiculous move, but then you break it down because the rule book, low-key, this might not be a travel, that's not even a question without James Harden, hands down, it's not... As much as I have to say about James Harden, I should have talked about James Harden, the Charles did with James Harden. When we're talking about post-2015 basketball specifically, James Harden has a bigger imprint on basketball in that time frame. Again, outside of LeBron, Curry, you can argue okay. Kevin Durant. Paul George. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, now honestly. you got to say Paul George. Mm-hmm. Um, still elite company. In terms of for the game of basketball. So just saying he's a James Harden, insane. Um, then I'm with Sage. Who's better, him or Larry Bird? Hey man, 2.0, <laughs> we done with the 90s, done with the 80s. I'm not trying to hear that shit. We and, and I would love to have a conversation with him because I loved he said that. Yeah, nigga, shut the fuck up. Yeah, old niggas, because I'm not trying to hear none of that Larry Legend bullshit when we're talking about the Luca. 
I, I, I'll sit there and talk to you all day about it. I'm with Sage. He's seen a comment. He probably was on playback one late night or doing some fucking stream or, or just being bored and seeing niggas trolling him. Seeing niggas joking, seeing niggas be hyperbolic, whatever it is, seeing niggas do what internet niggas do. And all he said was, This see, this was wrong with these niggas now. This is this is the problem. And went on this fucking hill to die on. Like and, and he's racist. I'm not forget he's racist to Europeans. It is confirmed. You put a little think- mustache on him, you know who he is. Come on. This is crazy. I think uh, if you listen back to the original take. He was trying to say something and just fucked up the explanation altogether. Because I think the take he was trying to say was just that, okay, if you're not a top four team in the league, you need to have the outlier season, right? Which is something that we've talked about on this podcast. If you're not if you're not going to be winning at, at, at crazy rates and putting up good numbers, you have to put up historical shit to win the MVP. He fucked up by saying, uh, yeah, the reason why... Uh, what you call it? The reason why Nikola Jokic is the worst MVP of all time, statistically, is because he didn't win much. He fucked up because of that. He just fucked up the explanation. But even in that supposed right take, you can still pick that apart because I genuinely feel like the conversation around the MVP has changed since 2017. Um, I've been adamant on that uh, with this podcast. Um, and I don't know, just just holding the MVP, the MVP conversation now. To the standards of what the conversation was in 2010, 2000, 1990. That's just a wrong way to look at the MVP conversation, in my opinion. Now, I will say this. <clears throat> this is a quote. You can't take this young man for granted. He's better than Dirk. He's in the atmosphere of MJ. The best to ever do it. LeBron, Kobe. And so just to appreciate what this young man is doing at the age of 24 is something that Dallas has never seen. And I've said this internally. He is better than Dirk. That is Jason Kidd on Luka Doncic. Uh, I, I guess that is a comparison to Michael Jordan. I, you know, right, right there. That's that's the one we're looking for. Um, so man, we gotta walk that back for Gil, man. Walk that back for your guy. Walk that back for him real quick, Damo. Did he lie? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you said Damo, but I, I, did he lie? Dirk, Dirk or Luka? The- what are we doing? No, are we Dirk or Luca? MJ. <laughs> MJ or Luca? What, what are we doing? Uh, did he lie? But but that's besides the point of if he lied. I'm just going to recycle because Damo, I'm glad you emphasize in your point. I'm going to emphasize again as well. When people do that cross image of Anthony Edwards and Michael Jordan, and I don't want to slander Ant. Y'all know Ant in my five now. I fucks with Anthony Edwards. Let me be very clear. But I don't hear nothing about that. I don't hear nothing about Tatum being Kobe all day, every day to the point. And then when people are like, yo, stop being Kobe, just be Jason Tatum. But then he's still getting Kobe can- comparisons regardless. I don't hear nothing about that. But you heard one tweet from his coach. <laughs> and, and now it's and now it's all out of hand, which is great. You'll start hearing about Ant though in like two to three years. You'll start hearing about SGA next year. But But yeah. the thing is, though. It's still crazy because then they'll go to Jokic to odd levels. It's it's all it's it's like weirdly different when it's been Giannis, Jokic, and um Luca than it's been everybody else. Everybody else has gotten the typical we love you, we hate you, we love you, hate you shit. J- a la Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis. But at least even those players, to be honest, let's really talk ball. A little bit different, a little bit different tier than the three names I mentioned earlier. But the three main three names I mentioned earlier, if those names were like LeBron, Katie Curry. Nah, you're good. <laughs> Listen, um, well, I'm not going to get too carried away on my comparisons. I actually still do believe in foreign players, me, myself, and I, right? And with that being said, when I head over to prize picks, I will be putting some cash money down on down some, down some, down some, down some, down some foreign down. players. You supposed to take it away. All right. Well, um. Before we move on with the rest of this podcast, I just want to shout out the sponsors of this podcast, Prize Picks, the proud pons- the, the proud sponsors of the Let's Keep It Buck podcast, our favorite way to play daily fantasy sports, and I think it should be yours as well. All right, we will show you how to do an entry right now. Omar, please share your screen. All right, all you got to do is sign up for an account, go on their website, download their app, um, and if you really know ball, you can win some money. And uh, let's go ahead and make some picks. Omar, take it away. What, what, what are you feeling today, man? Let me ask you. This is just real quick, yes or no. 
do y'all really use the stats analytics to gauge like what they what they do in the game? No. Depends on what I'm depends on what I'm picking. Well, with that being said, because I believe in the Euros, I'm gonna go Nikola Jokic more on mm-hmm. the rebounds. And then I am going to go ooh, James Harden. Way less. Womp womp. On that on that on that PRA. I'm gonna go ahead. Scared cash don't make no cash. I'm gonna go ahead and put forty dollars on there and I'm gonna hit place entry. Boom. Oh. Just like that. And that is how you make an entry on prize picks. If you guys use code LKIB, you guys can get a hundred percent match on your first deposit of up to one hundred dollars. Links everything will be in the description and shout out to prize picks for sponsoring this podcast. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, I wish I could be Gilbert Arenas and say ridiculous things on this podcast and not get, care about uh, you know what people say. But nonetheless, we move on. And make fifty k a month. And yeah, make make fifty thousand. Wow. Was, on I was bitch about how me and Souls aren't Gilbert Arenas. Unironically. Yeah, um, let's actually get into another foreign player. And I, and you know, Oscar, I don't even think I really hear them talk about him too much. But Victor Wembanyama is is going crazy. Yeah, who is this guy? He's like the one accepted one for now. He's like the mm. one accepted one. Is because he's a rookie? It's because he's black. It's because skin tone. Yeah, I'm about yeah, to say. He's mm, black. Yeah. He's just um, this was, yeah. If this, if this was Wimby Yamba from fucking Finland, <laughs> he was he was the oh color. Oh my god, hell no. Lori Markin. This was oh, Chris yeah. Stops, No, fuck that. If this was Porzingis, hell no. Yeah, yeah hell no. Um, Vicky deserves D P O Y. Now that's that's a, that's it. That's a producer Cruz original. And it is quite possible that he's having either the best or second best rookie season of all time. Uh, we'll get into what Draymond said about uh, uh, Victor Wimbenyama, but Victor Wimbenyama has more career blocks than 86.6 of all players in NBA history. Mind you, he's only played like what 50 some games, 40 some games, somewhere around there. Um, Listen, just real quick, do we think that he should win DPOY? I just got to know from you guys. I've started off the last two segments. When y'all go ahead. It's, it's between him and Gobert for me. It's between him and Gobert for me. Um, I personally said on a feature video for Souls and Sage, hey, man, just give it to Gobert because uh, Vic is about to dominate that award for future years anyway. So uh, as meeky as it sounds, let Rudy get another one, man, so Vic can get the next five type shit. But specifically this year, I mean, Rudy is anchoring the number one defense in the league and uh, is really important to that defense. I understand uh, Wemby's value to the Spurs as well defensively. I'm not about to, uh, he's on a bad team, so um, he's not valuable defensively. But Rudy Gobert's pretty good at defense. I don't know, he's, he's pretty good. That guy's pretty good at defense. So, no. He said this on social stage, by the way. This, he's not lying. <sighs> okay, keep going, keep going. Damn, well, quick answer. Let's go, man. Um, yeah, give it to Wimby. Yes, he should go. get it. Um, he, he should get the award. I don't care if in future years he's going to dominate it. He's a player that should dominate it. I don't want Rudy Gobert winning any more defensive player of the years because oh then God. in another 10 years when we're making Hall of Fame cases, you're going to look and realize the league like Rudy Gobert run off four, five, six DPOIs and you realize, oh man, but get Biombo is a Hall of Famer and he's not. You talking about the guy that airballs dunks? Fuck out of here. Yes, I'm being biased, and yes, I'm hating. I would much rather give it to Wimby. Sage, yes, no. Wimby DPOY. Oh, no, I definitely think it's Wimby. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest. In my argument, whether you want to call this Mickey as well or not, I'm going to regurgitate what I said on Souls and Sage. Mild spoiler. Um, I think Victor Wimbanyama not only means significantly more to his team on the defensive end, but he's just play, even played a little bit better. But at least um, Victor Wembanyama doesn't have a J Mac, you know. <laughs> he, he, he don't have that. He doesn't have a lot of defensive talent around him. And then I'm not, and y'all know I'm not a fan of on-off numbers. But dog, when that boy Vic ain't playing, <laughs> when <laughs> it's chicken, it, it is literally chicken. He's doing everything right on the defensive Ooh. end. And the only argument is. Fair enough, based on statistics and even a little bit of eye test. You could argue Rudy's having his best defensive season yet. 
and I still think Wimby's is better. So I'm going with Wimby, but it it's close. I'm not going to act like the person that comments below that I don't know, boy, I'm a stupid casual. Rudy got it. Go for it. Well, let is, me, is let there, me, I'm not bad. Let me get into what Draymond has to say. I think that, you know, he knows ball, right? Wimby is 12th in the league and still is a first in block. And those are great numbers. And as he continue on in his career and that team gets better, I don't think those numbers are going anywhere. I don't think Wimby's going to block less shots. Um, I don't think Wimby's going to get less steals with his length. And so he'll have these numbers and he'll have opportunity to win defensive player of the years. I personally don't think that is this year. Even if Rudy Gobert wasn't having the season that he's having and their team having the season that they're having, I still don't think you can give that award to somebody who's on the 24th best defense in the league. I knew somebody was you coming up. You are doing that, but then you got to move the needle back for Jason Tatum. It can't be, oh, man. They love Jason Tatum. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you know Jason Tatum win MVP. You got to move that needle back because clearly we're just moving the needle whenever we may, whenever we feel like we can. If you're going to give Victor the Defensive Player of the Year award. And, and I would, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, this is going to bring up a question for, for me after this segment um, when it comes to Luca specifically. But there might be some credibility if we stay consistent. Let's stay consistent across the board. That means six men of the year as well should come from a team that wins, right? Yeah. It's, I would say look at the – oh, my fault. Go ahead, Sage. Yeah, I'm going to be quick. Uh, I'm going to just say that I, I don't like that take – only because is all NBA defensive team dangerously consistent as well to winning people is winning teams is all NBA first and second team uh, to the point where it's like, OK, um, this guy's on a uh, top five defense. This guy's on a winning team. All that stuff is that's how all NBA teams are, because I think it would be odd that a player could get all NBA votes, but not MVP votes or a player could get all NBA, all um, defensive team votes, but not defensive player of the year that'd be very strange so if that's what we're going that that's why i don't really like that argument but um i hear it and that's why i think it's an argument for rudy gobert um i would just say uh, if it's about staying consistent you know me i am mr consistency um if historically speaking for the most part more times than not the defensive player of the year has came from either a winning team or a highly rated defense, then let's keep up that tradition no matter what the stats are. Now, if we... Okay. Damn. Womp, womp. My 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 internet. Hello? Spectrum, oh. my boy. Oh, yo, Jones. In and out. Yeah, you time you are right, you back, you back, you back. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm going to keep it quick. Uh, unless there's been outlier years where players have, because of statistics on defense, that has been able to win the award. Cool. Let's see if Wimby compares to those guys. If he doesn't, then he doesn't get the award. If that's not how it's been historically or even in rare occasions, he shouldn't get the award. I'm for that. So I'm looking at it right now, and this is just quick. I actually didn't even look at their defensive ratings, but I'm going to assume that it's high because they most oftentimes end up being like one of the better teams in the league. First or second in either their conference or first or second in the league is where these DPOIs are coming from. Um, so it's looking like Wimbert, based off of this criteria and based off of what Draymond said, probably should not be it. But with that being said, how do we feel about, I mean, his, his odds for rookie of the year probably shouldn't even be classified as odds. I want to, I want to showcase this real quick. They have this thing called the uh, Wimby Gami, Scorigami for specifically for Victor Wimby Gami. So if you're not familiar with Scorigami, it's uh, a unique score. That's never happened in said sport. I think it started out in the NFL. But so they have Wimby Gami. Um, this is a unique stat line. Uh, Wimby stat line tracker. Has anyone ever reached these numbers in a game? Uh, this is by Extra Stat Muse. April 2nd, 9 p.m. Spurs lose 105 to 110. Victor Wimby Yama has 23 points, 15 boards, 8 assists, 1 steal, 9 blocks, 2 threes made. First time a player reached this stat line. Um, is he having the greatest rookie season that y'all have ever seen? That I've ever seen? Come on, it should be a no. It's, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm trying to think. Damn. Can I you think? Gotta think? 
Yeah. That you Blake ever seen? Blake Gr- oh, God. I'm about to say, no, no, no. B-Souls, I'm going to be super honest. <laughs> I was sitting there trying to think of a rookie year that I genuinely seen that's better. The only one I could think that's close is Blake. And I would say Wimby's has a Wimby's ha- is he's playing better than Blake did. I will say that. What are you? Wasn't, wasn't Blake like all NBA his first year? I want to say he was an all star his first year, was he not? He was an all star rookie. Now, mind you, he was hurt, but a rookie of the year, all star, 10th in MVP voting. He averaged 23 points, uh, half a block, a steal, uh, four assists, 12 boards. Uh, what are we looking at? 50% from the field, 29% from three. Uh, is that, that not crazy? But is that Wimby, dog? I mean, just for the rookie season, it's... I, I'll still go over Wimby. I'm not about to be obtuse right now. That that I've seen in my lifetime, because the names I'd probably bring up would be like, I don't know, Ricky Shocker, Tim Duncan, but I, I wasn't there. So, for the sake of this argument, yes, this is the greatest rookie season I've ever seen. Now, I'm going to raise it. Is this the greatest rookie stat line of all time? No. That one game? No. No, no, no. I just mean his his rookie season right now. No, no. off rip, Jordan. Jordan? Uh, yeah, no. Jordan averaged yeah. like 28. I'm going to say his rookie stat line is definitely better than one beast. We'll Jordan, off, oh, oh, Jordan averaged like 28. So points is the only thing that – I'm not and saying then I would say, the only thing, I would say but he also rookie, averaged five. I would say I mean, check rookie average numbers. Six. I would say check rookie Shaq numbers as well. I'm going to bring him up. I'm going to bring him up. You, just, you throw the name, I'm going to bring it up right now. I'll bring it up. David yeah, Robinson. Um, yeah. 28, 6, and 6 on 51%. I say that's damn good. David Robinson was the one that B-Souls said mm-hmm. as well. Is there Tim another Duncan. name? Tim Duncan, okay. Is there another Carm- name? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say Carmelo. Can you say My Carmelo? glorious goat. You My glorious Carmelo? king. I said King. I was going to say Carmelo and I stopped, but I feel like you might be able to say Carmelo. Oh, oh. Kareem. Kareem. Okay, that's the that's definitely the one I'm not gonna pull up. Well, I am gonna pull up Kareem just so we Magic can have and Bird. Did they both not have the rookie years? Magic Bird had a great Bird. one, I think. I don't okay. know. Well, Ma- well, Magic is. I don't know if he wants the statistical thing, but obviously, rookie Magic. There's a lot of great rookie seasons. Twenty year old rookie yeah. seasons now, but keep, keep, So Magic is the other one. Anybody else? Yeah, Magic Will, ain't going to the Chamberlain. statistics argument. All right, All right. Will Chamberlain, Will Kareem. Uh, I got Kareem already. Think. I don't know what he did his rookie season. All right, okay, so not, do me a favor, y'all. Then bring up, bring up, um, bring up uh, 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 Victor's number so I don't have to continue to reference him. Just bring him up. I'll bring, so him, up. I'll bring him up. I'll bring him up. No, no, no. Everybody, bring him up. Have him in your face so I don't use. So we don't have to keep thinking about what they look what like. Look yeah. Okay. Just, just everybody, bring them up real quick. All right. Let me know when y'all have them. Everybody, good. I got mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Y'all got the full mm-hmm. scope, not off your phone. But you can see it right, mm-hmm. on my screen, correct? All right, yeah. cool. MJ, 28, uh, a block, 2.4 steals, uh, six assists. Y'all know, y'all know how I round. Uh, 85% from the free throw line. Uh, what is this? 17 from three. And then 52 from the field. Played all 82 games. All star. How many minutes? By the, point six attempts. By the way, you weren't shooting. Thirty eight. I will say, for future reference, the only argument I can hear for Wimby is the fact that he's probably not playing as many minutes as any of these guys. That will yeah. be a caveat. I have. That that will be something I will look for towards Wimby. I forgot to have him on minutes restriction. So okay. That so is yeah, yes, yes, no. Yes, no. As I go down these. Yes, no. Mm-hmm. MJ. I'm gonna lean towards MJ. I, yes. I, yeah, MJ. MJ. MJ better. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's cool. We're gonna keep going. Shaquille O'Neal. 23 uh, points per game. Uh, these these guys are averaging a lot of turnovers, by the way. I'm not saying that. I don't know if y'all want me to say that. Because yes. MJ was at I mean, four. Sam. I'm about okay. to say Sam because yeah. Wimby's yeah. relatively high. Yeah. MJ's well. at four. Wimby's at three and a half. It's not okay, that's cool. They're all in the same. Uh, 23 points per game. This is Shaq. Four turnovers, four blocks, uh, a steal, two assists a game, 14 boards. Uh, 59 from the free throw line, no three point percentage registered, and 56 percent from the field on 38 minutes. Yes or no, Shaq? Shaq. Mm. Shaq. I think I'm gonna go Shaq. Okay, cool. Okay. Keep it pushing. Uh, David Robinson didn't start till he was 24. Just got to put that in there. 24 points, three assists or three turnovers, four blocks, two steals, two assists, 12 boards. 73 from the free throw line, 
uh, no three point percentage registered. Fifty three from the field, eighty one games or eighty two games in thirty seven minutes. Yeah, you can argue blocks. it's Mickey, but uh, four, four blocks. Yeah, you can argue it's Mickey because he's twenty four, but it's David. <laughs> David, yeah, yeah. Damo, yeah. Iso, David. Yeah. No, All right, cool. let's keep it pushing. Timmy D, twenty one points, uh, three turnovers, three blocks, a steal. Three assists, 12 boards. We're at 66 from the line. We are at no three-point percentage. We are at 55 from the field. We are at 39 minutes played, all 82 games. I actually might have got to pull that one up. I might say I'm I'm pulling one B on that one. Yeah, that one's kind of mm-hmm. close. Um, if awards matter, fifth in MVP, first in all, def- uh, all NBA team, damn, second all defensive team, all-star, rookie of the year, and fifth in DPOY. By the way, chat, this is strictly statistics. That's why we're talking about it this way. Um, ooh. These are one of the ones I'm saying. If, if Wimby's playing 10, 10 more minutes, uh, I, he's definitely doing better than that one. Yeah, the X Factor is literally. Still was dumb efficient, though. So, mm-hmm. ooh. I yes, might no. make a decision. I go, t- I go Tim and Wimby. Fuck it, Wimby. New niggas. We done with the 90s. Fuck it. All these in seven, to be honest with you, but I'm going to go to Yeah, this, so far. that's tough. That was a tough one. I'll just say Wimby first, Ives. Fuck it. We should be pretty quick. Carmelo, Carmelo's 21, three turnovers, half a block, a steal, three assists, six boards, uh, 77 from the free throw, uh, 32 from three, 43 from the field, uh, 37 minutes, 82 games, second in rookie of the year, 14th in MVP. I'll go uh, Wimby. Wimby. Yeah, I got Wimby. I got Wimby. All right, cool. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, this this probably won't even be yeah, a conversation. Cool. 29 points per game, no blocks, but you got to think. No steals. Four, they, they, yeah. they, they didn't count it. You got to mm-hmm. think. No turnovers as well, but you got to think. Uh, four assists, uh, 15 boards. Um, where is he at? No three-pointers because, you know, uh, 52% from the field, uh, all 82 games at 43 minutes played, third in MVP. I don't know who won it that year. Second defensive uh Second defensive team, second All NBA team, All Star, and Rookie of the Year. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Kareem. Yeah, gotta go Kareem. All right, last two, three. Uh, Larry Bird, twenty-one points per game, uh, three turnovers, half or a, a block rounded, uh, one point seven steals, two steals, five assists, ten boards, eighty-four uh, percent from the line, forty uh, percent from forty-one percent from the three. And then 47% from the field, 36 minutes, 82 games, fourth MVP, first team all NBA all star rookie of the year. 21, 10, and 5, essentially. Ooh. 21, That's 10, good. 5, two steals, a block, rounded, three turnovers. That's a damn good one. Um, I must say. I'm gonna say Bird. They went from yeah. a 29 win team to a 60 win team this rookie season. That's kind of crazy. Oh, that don't matter. Mm. <laughs> How many minutes nice. Bird play? That's close. That's very 36. That's very close. I'm going Wimby. And just to answer your question, Omar Willis Reed won MVP that year, and Jerry West was second. The niggas I'll go. I'll that. go Wimby. I'll fuck it. I'll go Wimby. But that's very close. This Maybe that makes sense. was so good when he came in. Larry Bird. Come on, dog. Okay. I, I, I might didn't say it was responsible it, for all of the 40 wins. Like, goddamn, I'm not dick sucking that much. Fuck. I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, I might be biased, but I'm going to say Wimby. But that's close. That's close. Close. Yeah, I would have to. Let's Bill Simmons hears this clip and tells me otherwise. All right, last two. Uh, let me do Wilt because, you know, we'll probably get out of the way. It's probably something ridiculous as fuck. Uh, 38. Oh, there it is. Stop there. <laughs> all right, next. next. 38 27. We're done. Yeah, we're done. 38, 38, 37 38 and 27. That nigga had to shoot 20% from the field to make my mind change. No, yeah. no Russell. All right, okay. we'll go to Magic Johnson, last one. Um, okay. Yeah, Magic Johnson isn't, it's, it's not it. 18, four turnovers, half a block, uh, 2.4 steals, seven assists, uh, eight boards, um, 53% from the field, 36 minutes. Uh, did, I 
if I'm not mistaken, he wasn't starting often, but he was an all star and he was the rookie or second in rookie of the year voting. Yeah, and then finals and finals MVP, all that shit. Yeah, again, Magic's the at, Magic's the epitome of we're not talking about skill, we're talking about stats. No way. He's seen eighty eight. No. I'm going Compared to Wimby. Man, am I? Right? Right? I'm gonna take Wimby just because how much that like Wimby is a hard style line. Like, don't get me wrong, Wimby's having an all time rookie year. Yeah, I, I don't want to take that away from him, but like as we're listening, as we're going through these guys who are having amazing rookie years, and we have to put that into context. And I need people to understand this is the floor for Wimby. This is fucking insane. As long as health is out of the equation, I don't know what the fuck we're about to see from this nigga because he could easily turn in a, a, a super skilled Giannis or a fucking super dominant Kevin Durant. I don't know what this nigga is going to be. Yeah, I just think those, and this is hearkening back to the this conversations at the beginning of the season. I think that those people who um, – just oh, he's it's gonna be a better rookie season than Kareem or whatever the case may be. That was even in high at the time it was so lofty, and that's where our, my soapbox was. Um, being in it now, it just it kind of confirms it. Um, I know people, a lot of people didn't even know those numbers that we were just rattling off, especially with like the David Robinsons and the Shacks and the Wilt, of course. Like that's a crazy ass. That's crazy, dog. That, those are some crazy ass numbers we just heard. Yeah. Same numbers. Like we kind of scoffed at eighteen, eight, and eight, bro. Like, <laughs> like, I, yeah. At this point, yeah, because every fucking thing else is fucking crazy. But then, if you go to the postseason, for example, even statistically, that eighteen, eight, and eight turned to what? Eighteen, ten, and eight. Yeah, eighteen, ten, and nine. My bad. Eighteen, ten, and nine on the same efficiency. And then Basically. you got like forty and fifteen. And yeah. 10 so and the... yeah, I'm not from a yeah, rookie. Anybody that's about to clip that up. Magic is. Yeah, then we're not talking about some of these people's playoff numbers because I just went to Kareem's playoff numbers. I Kareem <laughs> Kareem in his rookie year, 28, 15, uh, no blocks or whatever, on 52%. In the playoffs, he went to 35, what the uh, 17, four assists. Um, on, yeah. on 50, all, all the on same shot. <laughs> on 57. So how he get he got better in his first rookie season or his rookie season's um which am a jig. Bro Broly. This is crazy. Well, yeah, are you done with the 70s? I, I'm still picking Wimby because niggas ain't out there on a perimeter. Like you know, he Oh no, we're like, doing just statistics souls. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done with the not let me be clear. I'm done. I don't don't make me do it. You play sorry ass. You play Willis Lee. Now that I'm thinking about it. Oh no. No, 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 you know. Hear me, out, hear me 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 out. Oh, you might got to get solo there. Of course, listen, listen, listen. Of so course I'm done with the 90s, man. Of course I'm done with the 90s. I don't know if I'm done with the 70s and 80s, though, man. I don't, what the f***? Ah, stinky, stinky, what the fuck? I feel how you want to feel, man. I, I still... It's still a soft spot for ABA basketball, man. Like, what, what are we really talking about, man? ABA Come basketball. On. What are you talking ABA about? You really basketball. like that red, blue, and white, huh? What are you <laughs> w call back. W call league without an N or W. <laughs> yeah, man. You do love. You do love that red, you white, and blue, man. Yeah. Fourth of July, your favorite holiday, huh? <laughs> but the ramparts. Watching college ball, man. When you want to talk about perfect, imperfect basketball. Go watch some ABA basketball, man. Perfect. We're talking imperfect. about imperfect basketball. We're talking about. No. Go watch. Go really watch Moses Malone, man. <laughs> Omar, are you, are you about to bring up um the latest Draymond clip though about the Victor DPO? Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank God you reminded me. Yeah. Oh, for enough, for the there's offline. There's no, they just spamming. You you played an old clip. I was kind of surprised you yeah. played the old clip. Yeah. Offline oh, viewer no, Draymond. Yeah. Yeah, they've been no. spamming it in the chat. Oh, 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 my bad. I didn't know that that was a... Uh... Oh, yeah, no, 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 yeah. He, he basically, mild spoiler when you click it, but doubles back. And it didn't come from a uh, producer cruise. My bad. <laughs> uh, he gave a phone call. Yeah, just put me out. We already 20 minutes after you introduced it. They already done typed. Yeah, Damn. It Word cook, buddy. You know me. Yeah. You know niggas. They ain't editing that comment. Wimby is definitely the defensive player of the year. The way he impacts the game... <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta love NBA discourse, bro. Trying to get a layup, and you see Wimby, and you just go the other way. That's a block shot. I say that. Take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, team record matters, and everybody who say team record don't matter is a lie. You know, so I think they got a few pieces around so them, but they need to fill out a lot of other pieces. What are the teams going to look like? around Wimby. That's an important one, but I don't know what lab he was created in, but I need to go create me a son in that lab because dude is unbelievable. How you double down and not double down at the same time, yeah. right? Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and y'all get mad at me and Souls for parodying NBA fans, but that, that's exactly what I just don't think, ultimately, I, I, and this is more of a free-flowing conversation now, I just don't think that people can really contextualize the numbers that they're seeing. And so they have to they have to come with something different. Cause even I'm thinking about what he said about Jason Tatum and moving the needle. I want to ask y'all, and this is this is something I had in the chat, or I, I texted it earlier today. Luca right now is averaging 34, 9, uh, 10 assists on 49 from the field, 38 from the three type shit let me let me go look at his uh, his steals or whatever steals is at one and a half cool if i took his 34 let's say to like 20 28 uh, right huh okay 28 29 there if i took his assist from 10 to 8 7 7 and a half somewhere around there and i took his rebounds down to 7 Six, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. But they are the second seed, first seed in the East or in the West. Mm. Is he all of a sudden the MVP? Actually, I'll go a step further. He'd be, uh, for some of you guys, the greatest player of all time. That sounds like LeBron James. <laughs> that sounds exactly like LeBron James. So, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, he'd win the MVP, but I feel like I need to know the context as to why his numbers are decreasing. No, nah, because because there have been players in NBA history who took a statistical dip for the betterment of the team. Like Tim Duncan has gone out there and said that. Kobe's gone out there and said that. MJ's gone out there and said that. So, yeah. And they're the MVP. Okay, I take a step back. Let's say we distribute all that. Whatever whatever stats I just said, we we could just evenly distribute it amongst like the starting five for the uh for the for the the Dallas Mavericks. Like we'll just evenly distribute. It. Kyrie gets a point, he gets an assist, he gets a rebound, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. That's that's the context behind it. He took that step back so they could take a step up. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just feel like if he's averaging 28, 8, and 8, and they're the first seed in the West, any argument that you can make against Luka is out the water. You cannot bring up, oh, he's not winning enough because he is winning enough. You cannot bring up the stats because 28 and 8 is still 28 and 8. So at that point, boom, that's a really strong argument to me. That is why Jokic is winning the MVP this season. So, yeah, he, he would win the MVP. And that supersedes a guy who's averaging 34 points a game. I mean, they're 1A and 1B to me. It's not like I don't see Luka's value in this conversation at all. I, I've been telling you I'm switching every single day. But. I've been consistent. I've been consistent ever since we've all agreed this shit is not consistent. <laughs> ever since I've realized that, yo, at some point in time, yo, that seven seed guy is gonna have a case. I've been like, okay, whichever seems the most impressive to me, I'm giving that person the award. And winning is a factor in being impressive. Yo, get your last season. I thought for sure should have had it. Now, and B clearly was in the conversation the same way i think that while a lot of people Jokic has won a lot of games he's very impressive but luka should definitely be in that conversation and i'll go as far as i said on social stage as well um luka's like what the fifth seed right now mm -hmm. yeah, that's what he got to do especially in the context of the, name of the game for like 90 conversations people always ask context 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 all right the context about the dallas mavericks being an entirely different team from basically ever let alone post trade deadline than they are right now i mean pre-deadline let alone they are right now is insane context for me so they've been winning like fuck ever since they've been luca's been hooping ever since everybody's been cooking and we're just don't care because what the gm didn't pull a trade in the first half of the season it wasn't like luca was playing bad in the first half of the season I, don't, I, don't. I would also I would also ask, and again, this is super hyperbolic. If the difference between the third seed and the ninth seed was like one game, literally statistically speaking, one game or point zero zero five on win percentage, 
And at the last game of the season, I know this sounds dick suck, crazy hypothetical. They're the third seed. They lose that game. They slide all the way down to the ninth seed. Are we all of a sudden saying like, ah, he's not. Yeah. What's funny about that hypothetical is it's damn near just something that could objectively happen. For context, everybody, they're only two games back from the Clippers who are the four seed. And they're only, in terms of just pure wins and losses, two losses away from being the literal 10th seed. So it's just. Again, let's, people have t- let's, 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 let's in theory say say, and this is in real time. Like the 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 Mavs should win tonight. They're playing the Hawks. Trey okay. Young is Hawks. They're up right now when I'm at halftime. The 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 Clippers. What's the, uh, Harden is struggling. You know, apparently Kawhi had to get some ice on his knee, et cetera, et cetera. They they lose right there. Now we're a game difference. We're literally on a game by game difference. You telling me a game is gonna make. Like them winning or losing a game is gonna change your mind that much? Yeah, and that's that's my thing. I'm sorry, I keep chatting when you primarily talk to souls, but I feel like I hate in, in even in certain takes in anime, wrestling, rap, whatever. I hate when people half ass things and half ass no, argument. Half assing it? No, not necessarily be so, but in general, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. That's what you get. But in the sense of like. Half assing the argument, like, yeah, um, Luca was a dive seat, but then you'll have your screenshot of wow, the West is uber competitive, like abnormally competitive. Like, oh my god, the three seed is just as good as the nine seed, but then simultaneously, uh, he's just a ninth seed guy, but he's one win away from three. What? <laughs> like, come on, bro. It just it it seems like people want to pick and choose when they want to say certain takes to get their shit off, and it's crazy. It's corny. Fuck crazy, it's corny. The answer is no. The MVP discussion for Luka would not change because we've seen it in recent history. Uh, when Jokic won the award as a six seed, uh, when the standings were relatively close, that did not matter in MVP voting, and he still won. And um, even, I think one of these years, like, the counter to Jokic's MVP case was the fact that um, Embiid was the first seed in the Western Conference um, with 49 wins, but the voters looked at it and said, yo, okay, uh, the Nuggets are the third seed in the Western Conference, so a lower seed than the Sixers. They also have a worse record than the Sixers, but because of the statistical difference between Jokic and Embiid, he still won the MVP award back then. So, um, yeah, I, again, I think in recent history, because of more nuance to the conversation, which I do think is a good thing, it is not just a who's the best player on the best team conversation anymore. And that is why we are sitting here today, and Luka is number two in MVP uh, conversations. So, to who? To who? Um, the NBA MVP ladder has Luka at number two. They, they got Jokic one? Yeah, they got Jokic one first. They got Jokic one. Where's Shea at? Three? Four? Nah, Shea's yeah. like... Uh, oh, he's three now? Oh, no, no, no. Gian- Giannis moved up to three. Shea's yeah, at four. Tatum, Tatum's still at five. I'll double check, but Shea yeah, I could have swore that um, SGA was barely in the five now. Damn. I'll check for you right now, actually. Is this week? Oh, okay, I see. This is this is March twenty. Oh, yeah, Shay's four. Shay and Tatum have been going back and forth. By the way, you gotta do it for us, man. Come on, nothing to do with nothing. Shout out Anthony Davis, man. But nothing to do with nothing. Facts. Um, Anthony Davis is a dark horse defense player of the year candidate, in my opinion. But yeah, that combo. He should be. Yeah, he he should be. It's crazy. This is stupid. But yeah, like saying, and then I seen someone in chat. Not to pick on you, bro, but I seen someone in chat even say. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right, Sage. Luca, go win that game. What in the Coliseum? <laughs> like, what are we saying? What, what in the, like, who the fuck you think you, like, are you kidding me? You waited all season for this, so that nigga should treat that shit like a championship game, dog. What the hell? That is so, that's so cringe. And, 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 I, and that's ironic, too, because then we are the same fan base that was backing up Kawhi when he talked about load management. So should, what Luca really should be doing after he secures himself in the playoffs is to, to not play for some of you guys. But now MVP seasons are determined by the April 14th game. All right. <laughs> All right, bro. My God. And, and and last thing I'll say on this, because I think it's actually relatively important. It also very much sucks when you have certain people at the helm of your ship. And I'm speaking specifically about Giannis, who can determine if you are going to win or lose because that is people's criteria. Because when you have a coach like Doc Rivers, 
at the helm, it is extremely hard to win games, and therefore people are going to be pushing you out of the MVP conversation. I just want to let y'all know the Bucks are 17 and 16 since they fired Adrian Griffin. And that's after having a 30 and 13 start. The Bucks are 15 and 15 in their last 30 and are currently paying as many coaches as the Heat have had in total since 95. I want to tap in because we talked about, you know, coaches having podcasts and then being able to voice their opinion. I want y'all to hear about real accountability. It talked about Angel Reese this week and the, you know, victim blaming and all this stuff. Let's let's hear what Dr. Rivers has to say. It's funny. I've actually been sitting back and watching everything. Uh, not just our players, but our travel crew, everything. Uh, and I've made a lot of notes. I will say that. I won't share that. Um, but very um, professionalism, seriousness on the road. Um, and and that's something that we can fix. Um, that's something we're going to have to fix. Do you feel like that just gets cleaned up in the playoffs? Like, have you seen that in the past? That it, yeah, I'm not concerned. Playoffs? Yeah, yeah. The playoffs are a new beast, but I'm looking at it for the long run, too. I mean, it's not just for now. Like, we got to be a better road team. And it's funny, I've actually... So part of the reason they're losing is because of the travel crew. Uh, mm-hmm. If we're, we're doing something wrong, um, you know, as a, as a coaching staff, we, we have to figure out what we need to do different um, as far as practices and training. Um, as a travel staff, not talking players, um, we may have to do something different there too, because something's missing and, um, everybody seems happy, you know, um, but except for me after a game, you know, and so I, <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to figure that out. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I didn't see this clip. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh. Wait, no I'm the only one who cares. <laughs> God, oh, no. I mean, we, fuck her, we fuck around losing to the Wizards, losing to the damn Grizzlies. These niggas happy. <laughs> These young bloods, man. All, all they care about is a check. Oh God. I asked about you know what you feel like is not traveling in your game on yeah. the road. Another one and two road. I don't know. Trip. I think focus. I don't know what it is. Uh, I asked about you know what I do. Yo, these niggas like, all right, y'all ain't gave me this job. These niggas don't care. What is Sorry, this? Giannis. Sorry, Giannis. Your, your, your MVP conversations are going out the window because that's the guy. Oof. I knew they were mid. I never knew they were seven and 16, 17 and 16 mid. I knew they were mid, but damn. Because the definition of mid, buddy. They're, like, they're like down to hawks. the last game. Like, 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 we're, talking about, like we're talking about thumbs up or down they're for fucking hawks. MVPs. No, thumbs up or down for literal mid is on game by game. That is crazy. Also, side note, Brad, for anyone who cares about them on-off numbers, I just look at Jokic's. On-off with Doc Rivers? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Jokic's on-off numbers are crazy this year, bro. Uh, yeah, he's the uh, fucking who cares? Of the game, yeah. On off numbers for literally every best player should look crazy. And, and that's not the point. Nah, nah, but 19.7 compared to 6.6 with Luka, that's a crazy difference. Yeah, there's no Kyrie on that team, and Jamal Murray's been hurt a lot this year. Wait, what? There's no Kyrie on that team, and Jamal Murray's been hurt a lot this year. That's, what's their mm-hmm. offense without? What's that's their offense? Pretty true. I think Jamal. What's their, what, Jamal's wait, at Kyrie's been hurt. Yeah, Jamal's at fifty-four. Yeah, yeah so both their secondary hey, stars I'm, have been hurt. They have other pieces. I, I we'll, we'll we'll get into that conversation a little bit later. But what what's the conversation on Doc Rivers? Stuff? What's the Kyrie's we were fit. talking about the MVP award? My bad. Damn. What's that conversation on the doctor, man? <laughs> he sucks. He stinks. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, He's I'm living not off that 08 made, ring yeah. since 2008 as a Celtics fan. He's been living off of that. Uh, Danny Ainge did him a favor in 08. He got blessed with the most stacked team um, in that era, arguably. They won a championship in their first year, um, and they still underachieve in that era. And ever since then, people have just been hiring him because, hey, he's a championship coach. He got the job done, this, that, and the third. But he has failed over and over and over and over again. And he just keeps getting a shot in the NBA because he's a former NBA player with connects. Um, and again, he got that 08 ring. That's a conversation about Doc Rivers. I feel like he don't even want to be there. Like, no funny. Don't, don't, don't it seem like that? 
He not happy. That's what he told y'all. I mean, it yeah. sound like it sound like he fumbled back. his way. He fell into a relationship with a bitch he don't like. That's crazy. That's what it <laughs> nah. sound like. Yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, and I wonder who he's like talking about when he's blaming because he's keeping it broad, but it's got to be like a certain like three niggas he just hates. He's like, yo, Dame Bobby Portis and fucking, I don't know who's on this. Uh, it, well, Pat Bev now hate these niggas. Niggas is just happy <laughs> after losses. Hate them. No, nah, I can't be Pat Bev. That nigga, he's a maniac. Mm. You think he mad, Pat Bev? Pat, oh, he's about to go on a podcast real soon. I promise you, he's just waiting. He knew around here, so he, he's not, he ain't real keen with just talking about the uh, team business like that yet, but let this shit continue. He gonna drop a clip soon. Yeah, Doc, I, I'm not shocked. Yeah, to talk about Doc, I mean, I'm not shocked they're mid. I was shocked they were dangerously, like, literally mid, but am I shocked the Bucks suck because Doc Rivers is coach? No, what? I, I, the only reason I'm shocked the Bucks suck is because I look at that personnel and I'm like, what the hell are y'all doing? But outside of that, nah. Yeah, there are teams that got the pieces. Same thing with the Lakers. It's just the coaching. Jesus Christ. But, they need to... Uh, random straight. My bad, Laker fans. But uh, I mean, you ain't wrong. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan of firing the coach. But again, th- this is this is what I was signaling. And, and, we're, and we're definitely not going to just go deep into this. This is what I was saying. This whole time. Now it looks like they want to fire a coach. Hold on now. Y'all done been through how many coaches in a span of 18 months? I didn't get the Adrian Griffin firing. Like, come on now. So now we we really just spinning the wheel recycling. And if the coach doesn't live up to Adrian Griffin's level, because mind you, let's say they fire a doc at the end of the season. Whoever comes in next has to be on pace for a 13 and 30 or 30 and 13 start. Cause if they not, people still gonna question, damn, why we, what is he doing? He's worse. Why do we hire why would we hire Adrian Griffin or fire Adrian Griffin a long time ago? And that person's gonna be back on the hot seat quick, fast, and hurry. Let so, me revise it. I just feel like I, I, I get why they um fired Adrian Griffin, because from my at least from what I saw from the decision, they didn't view him as the guy who's who's gonna get them over the hump at the end of the day. So it was on some, let's just cut him early before we even get to that point. Kind of similar to the Joe Mazzula conversations last season. But um, I just feel like with the way they were playing under Adrian Griffin this season, to do it at the time that they did, I would have at the very least, and even then I still wouldn't have done it probably. Like I would have waited till the end of the season to do that shit, not in the middle. Especially when you're trying to win a championship this year. Like continuity is important. Like that that has been proven time and time again. With all the teams that make it deep into the playoffs, with the teams that actually win the championship, you look at the Bucks in 21, the Warriors in 22, Nuggets in 23, Lakers, uh, Lakers might be the outlier. But, yeah, continuity is mad important, and they just ruined that shit. Yeah. Mad they didn't get any nurse. Let's get into uh, the real meat and potatoes, what people look for every single week. Day, really. I take of the week. Mm. Damo, take it away. Home first this time? Bet, bet, bet. Um, well, look, this week I'm keeping it light. I'm keeping it fun. I'm keeping it, you know, kind of tame. Wait, I didn't set up. I wasn't expecting this so soon. But hold on, hold on. Boom. And now I'm about to share my screen. Boom. Boom. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. My hot take is, <laughs> fat niggas are back, and we never left for real. Look, man, never doubt a fat guy. Oh yeah, fatty boy. That's one. Big. Yeah. Wildway Junior. That's Godway. No joke. Uh, oh, like that. No, wait, for <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hey. 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 Obu. Hey. Obu. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh man. Fat guy, man. Oh, yeah. That's my hot take of the week. Fat guys, we have five. Yeah, man. Got DJ Burns. You know what I'm saying? Um, me. <laughs> you know. Keep going. We're on top. Queso. Queso. Yes, sir. Legend. <laughs> we up. <laughs> Damo, are you still? Are you still in the? 
The Allegiance. He's on the Allegiance, right? The yes, fat guy, the Allegiance. Fat guy. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Big, big year for Big Domo. How he stopped being fat? I'm about to say. I mean, like all respect, nigga. D- did he look like he quit? <laughs> like, what the fuck? He's the same nigga. The same nigga. The same nigga, bro. Nah, bro. After the sit up streams, you still oh, the same? Nah, my. that's crazy. Oh, yeah, nah, I'm trying to cook up. Nah, you trying to cook up. Now I'm the villain, bro. Yeah, nah, say he's got two Now I'm the villain, bro. Now I'm the villain. Now, he ain't now never I'm changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I ain't say that. Took the Rabot pants, flipping pies. That was crazy. Oh, my God. That was kind of crazy. That was crazy, man. That was crazy. Yo, y'all, say, y'all stay saying I don't say no controversial shit, bro. You know what's crazy? I'm just saying, bro. Like, you don't just say you quit, bro. Like, like, like what if his announcement on stream yet tomorrow is gonna be like, yeah, I lost ten. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, if that's the announcement, I do feel like ass. I'm going on my fitness journey. I lost oh, ten. Shit. You know I mean? Now, now I'm going to hell. Ah oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shit, say oh, uh, Audi Crooks, bad people on top, man. Right, well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna kick my segment short, sweet to the point. Um, man, because I ain't gonna lie, we don't have a lot of relatability here. This is for my comment warriors to talk about. I will be in this comment section because hey, I ain't gonna lie, this ain't the pod for it. We'll talk about this on the TSO stream. But my hot take of the week is my hot take for this weekend, and I ain't gonna lie, my boy finishing that goddamn story. It's over, nigga. It's over. And new, and new on Sunday. It's done. It's over with. It's been a long rain. My, oh, oh. see, about to go get. Uh, it's do. It's over, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It's all over. I ain't gonna lie. It's all over, bro. He's hit. This is exactly what's gonna happen. He's hitting three crossroads. He's pinning Roman Reigns, and then Rock is gonna hit that nigga on Roman with a rock bottom. And we ain't gonna see him for months. Spoiler, nigga. It's over. And new. Next hot. Next topic, man. Comment below. Adrenaline's in the soul. On this day, I see clearly. Hey, and the <laughs> ah, man. Not so much a man. Oh. Uh... <laughs> No, let me stop. You're nasty. You're nasty. You're nasty. <laughs> be souls. This might be a week one chat, but I seen it on TikTok, man. The old 2K guys, the old 2K content creators are one of the biggest reasons as to why 2K fell off, man. Mm. Yeah. They started. And shout out to the guy who posted it on TikTok because I think it's a, it's a great explanation. I think, um, you know, they, they started the cycle of hate. The cycle of every single year complaining about the game. Um, and then the year after, uh, romanticizing the previous game. Mm. And now here we are, and no one just enjoys the game. And now, they all left the community. I understand why y'all left the community. A lot of y'all are succeeding. But um, the 2K community, in big part, is the way that it is right now. Not solely, not solely, but um, partially as well. Because of old 2K YouTube. Y'all complain too much, man. Y'all complained about 2K17 when it was out. And now we're looking back. Oh, 2K17 Park. Oh, my God. It was so peak. It was so peak. It was. 2K20. It was 2K20, same thing. 2K20, same thing. I remember all the hate during that time. We're even starting to um, romanticize 2K21 Next Gen now. Uh, 2K21 Next Gen. I was speaking. We were all complaining about 2K21 Next Gen. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. man. Nah, t- yeah. Nah, you're yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Nah, you have a very interesting hot take. F- fuck you thinking that was Mickey. Maybe I'm just because of 2K head. I'll say this. I, d- I did notice in the 2K community, because <laughs> 2K17, I don't blame people for complain- com- uh, complaining about 2K17. 2K17 is literally blinded by nostalgia, people being uh, good at it, and glitches. I don't know what the fuck. We all acknowledge everything bad about the game, but because you think you're good at it, it was a fire game. No, but then again, that's everything in 2016 and 17. But that's besides the point. Um, it was the first year that people went back and played 2K16, a very popular game, a very popularly well-received. I think that's the last time 2K was like, yo, this might win game of the year good. Like, that's probably the last time. And then 2K18 happened as well. So people were starting to dunk on games. But then it's those where, yeah, I might agree with your hot take. 
is 2K19 and 21 are the epitome of what you're talking about. Two 2Ks that when it was initially released, people dunking on it, dunking on it, dunking on it. And I'm playing this bitch like, green? That shit kind of cold. Like, 2K19 was kind of fire. What are, what are you talking about? And then a couple months later, after the game dies, after you made the titles and all that stuff about the games dying, now 2K19's gas, but you already done pissed off endless people. The complaints are already out there, especially with 21 next gen. So I'll say that on money. I don't know where that love came from. I thought everybody so hated the game. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I log on my phone, 2K21 next gen's gas. I'm like, nigga, I can't even run. Y'all for y'all know how annoying the trigger was in 2K21. You had to turn that bitch off. But hey, that's out of here nor there, man. I, it's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, uh, Omar, I, I linked the TikTok. If you could play real quick. I feel like you might explain it better than me. I got, I got you, Papa. I got thank you. Hold on. Give credit when credit is due, because I genuinely just stole that take. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to him. <laughs> I didn't have one for today, Chad. <laughs> I might be. I don't necessarily have one either. Hold on. Acknowledge me, nigga. Hold on. TikTok got me doing a puzzle right now. There right, we go. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, hey man, hold this bitch. TikTok got me doing a puzzle in order to make sure that, uh... Some shit, side note. <laughs> no, you're real belt. Is it heavy? <laughs> My eyes start stinking for no reason. I'm mad. I'm mad. I got you talking, bro. I was like, I know you're doing your thing with the chat, bro. You, you ass, bro. OGs on, man. are responsible for the Niggas downfall ain't... of 2K. And at this point, I'm feeling like rookie versus the OGs because I'm standing on that. Same thing as always. If you have thoughts and opinions about this topic, make sure you let me know in the comments. I will be replying to all of them. The same OGs and content creators you guys grew up watching play 2K always hated 2K. We're already at the end of NBA 2K17's life cycle. In a couple of months, everyone's gonna forget how much trash they talked about 2K17 just to drop 60 more dollars on 2K18. Bro, the game been out for a month and we already on our fifth patch. About why 2K18 flopped and like the reasons behind it, everything encompassing it. This reputation stems from 2K18, one of the worst sports video games ever made. Take a look, seven seconds left, a couple outlet passes. <laughs> That's the way you go down, ladies and gentlemen. God forbid you get the animation where you fumble the easy pass. NBA 2K20 launched in the worst way possible. Now, man, ladies and gentlemen, oh, you lost so much weight. Yeah, shout out, out the weight loss. Amazing. Problems, bugs and glitches. That nigga's down. Man. At this point, I feel like I'm. <laughs> NBA oh, 2K20. Stand by the way. Gym. Yeah, to the list. Honestly, y'all, um, recruiting. I'm very disappointed. Everybody is so quick to say that old 2Ks are better, but I just showed you examples of your content creators saying that those games were trash. So now it's really starting to click for me. Y'all aren't OGs. Y'all just always complained about the game. So if you're done with 2K, be done with 2K. Stop talking about it. And I can't wait to see the comments that's like, oh, bro, you're glazing 2K. Stop it. You're not on payroll. When in reality, a content creator can get 100 times more likes for ranting and disliking the game of 2K. And I could have did that all 2K23. Trust me, I did not play it. Go back and look at my page. If they make a game that I believe is decent, I'm going to play it. If they don't, then I won't. But what I'm not going to do is sit for a whole year and complain about it just to run up you. I'm not gonna lie. He said that that don't sound like OGs. That sounds exactly like OGs. Our OGs yeah, gonna... complain about the new shit every single time. Mm. I'm complaining about podcasting right now. We done with the podcast. It's all <laughs> yeah. about the shows. Yeah. Not... <laughs> now he has some fantastic points, and he, he also has some opinion. We done with podcasting. Um, my. <laughs> Do double interviews. We're doing live streams now. <laughs> Yo, shit. I cannot stand up. Anyway, anyway, all right. Let me get let me get into my let me get into my hot take real quick, man. Chat, you niggas is liars. You're liars. Ain't no way niggas did not just not blink. Y'all bugging. It's just kinda it's kinda loot code now. It's kinda loot code. It's so loot code that I already forgot it. Let me scroll up. Um <laughs> 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 oh, oh, okay. Oh yeah, it's really not a hot take. It's just a statement. Look, I hope, I hope, and I pray that Caitlin Clark remembers every single WNBA player who talks shit. Oh and yeah, and bust they ass. Oh yeah, 
when she gets into the league. And I know things can be different and stuff like that. But man, I'm a, let me tell you something. I'm gonna work hard for us to get Alexi Brown on our podcast, like a version of Alexi Brown on our podcast. Haley Jones, we're coming for you. But um, she won't have to say these stupid things. Oh fuck! This is Gill and him talking about Lexi Brown. I mean, about Caitlin Clark. Obviously, <laughs> that big ass hat. <laughs> Obviously, he's hard, you know what's crazy? My god, kids love that fucking hat. The big hat. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I bought him toys and everything. They stop playing with the toys. They love that. It's so crazy. <laughs> Caitlin for the twentieth time. She don't really. She takes bad shots at bad times. She don't play no defense. Who? And take 20 threes. Okay, like, what? It's a lot of threes. Them jumps. Oh, and then no midi. She could have had 70. She could have had 70. She was shooting no midi. She midis, did pass no, up a lot of No range. floaters, no none of that. Like, she was literally just passing up James Harden. There and just trying to get her teammates involved a lot, a lot of times just what you're saying she overpasses she she got a lot she need to add to her game <laughs> and they still giving her you know why these these threes based on the fact that they're scared of her shooting the threes so she's getting her shot off and the clean looks that she get she makes them and the tough shot she'd be bricking them shits and like you got to take advantage of those if you don't tell you're not taking advantage Miller, of those she misses. was nine for 20 like that's a lot of threes that's, that's a lot, a lot of, of made that's 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 a lot of made. Not, yeah it's it's hot at it's the end of the day man get them up yeah. no 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 i'm tired of nba fans forgetting that like, like yo, yo fuck fuck just disagreeing with his premise his argument is impossible his argument is actually impossible. So he says she only takes tough shots. She leaves a lot of easy shots up. And she needs to take those easier shots. But then he goes on to say she overpasses. So I'm like, okay, so I guess I guess I guess she's not playing that. But then she says, then he says, yeah, and then the open looks, she ain't on those. She only makes the tough shots. She can only, so I'm like, wait, so you want. You want her to make tougher shots, or do you want her to take open looks? Do you want her to pass, or do you want her to cook up? Like, huh? Well, and how do you well, even overpass? But, but <laughs> well, let me let me tell you what. And mind you, I wasn't even, it wasn't really even about Rashard McCann's. Rashard McCann said the dumbass shit. She he he laid it out. Lexi Brown for agreeing with that. I hope she busts your ass next year routinely. But oh, she what, still plays. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. She still plays. She still plays oh. in the league. She's on LA. Sorry, I think, but. My, my thing, even when they criticize like that, damn, you just want to have, have a perfect game. Everybody's supposed to have a perfect game is every crazy. single game. So she's supposed to average 70, I guess. If we see 40 is what she's getting, she's just supposed to have 70, you know, three straight games or four straight games in a row, whatever the case may be. We have got to stop, bro. Like, we we, we have gotten so far away from basketball discourse, like actual good basketball discourse. It's it's way beyond cook. And if you can't say names, stop talking about it. I know people. Oh yeah, we can't wait for people to get into the women's game or whatever. I don't want to hear Shannon Sharp, uh, or, or not Shannon Sharp, Keyshawn Johnson call uh, Flage Johnson Fluje sixteen times. I don't. But that's a different. <laughs> no. Lexi Brown, and I'm gonna play the rest of the clip, bro. Lexi Brown, I hope you get your ass busted. And disgusted every single time you pay pay Clayton Clark. Yeah, that's what she doing. They yeah. winning, right? but 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 like, like she said, they didn't make any adjustments. The adjustments, even if you talking about push her right, push her left, all that, that's one thing. Drop coverage, that's another thing. But you're not sending no doubles. You're not taking the ball out her hand at all. You're not making the other players. She play. got players. She got <clears> players though. She got the right players for her. She got yeah. That's what I'm people saying. who can make shots. That's what I'm saying. She got players. Everybody needed to step up for LSU. It needed to be bully ball. Like it was last year. They I gave think, the, I I think gave LSU, 40 some last year. I'll be feeling like LSU. That is, I, just, I just wanted to finish that. If I, want I, to think, I think that's a little, and I'm not even saying I hate that second half of that take. Well, to be fair. Oh my God. I'm not even saying I hate that second half of his take. To be fair, um, I think Caitlin Clark's adjustment was fuck it. I'm going to pull it from 30. <laughs> because for a while, she was passive in the game. So I'll, I'll say that take I don't even necessarily think is bad. But the first half, Nah, dog. And I know you were talking about Lexi, but I'm sorry. That's what I was stuck on, bro. Nah, dog. That ain't make no sense. 
I, I just want to say, because I really don't got much to say about this shit. It's a dumbass conversation again. I, I'm starting to lose more and more respect for this podcast the more clips come out. Because um, I don't know what the fuck you niggas about to be talking about. Um, I just need people to realize if she was 10 for 20, that would be 50% shooting. I think anyone would be happy to shoot damn near 50% on 23s. And the fact that she shot 45%, what, what's the number? I don't know off the top of my head. What's the number? Is it 45? Yeah, 45% from three. I'm just like that. Um, She shot 45% from three, shooting 23s. That's fucking amazing. I don't know what world we're living on, but just because you niggas think of yesteryear ball and say, oh, you, hey, you should have shot more jumpers. For real, for real. 23s? Take some mid-ranges. Shut the fuck up with your big ass hat. I don't, I don't like Kobe. so stupid. That's that dumb ass shit. You know, Kobe guy? You know when they did that to like uh, 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 James Harden back in the day? Oh, he doesn't have a midi. And I thought to myself, well, damn, he doesn't have to. Like, literally, nobody's making him stop to take mid range shots. He's either getting to the rim or he's taking a three, but nobody's really like, like making him take a mid range. And then I look back at the highlights from her last year. She was taking mid rangers. That's South Carolina. South Carolina did a good job. South Carolina made her with, with two bigs. They made her take some mid-range shots. She took them. I just don't like. First of all, also if you if you notice Rashard McCants, I wonder why your career just didn't go better. Like I really don't know. No, not not to be that guy, but like y'all niggas know, y'all niggas know everything about how to play basketball exactly the right way, a hundred percent of the time, all the time, and and have a criticism for all of it. If she took more middies, they would say that she took too many middies. What what happened to your game, Rashard McCants? Why it didn't turn out like that? Now, if he pulls up on the party, he says, what happened to your game? To that, you say. <clears throat> oh, I didn't dedicate my life to be a professional basketball player, but you did. So Good why, response. Response. why, why did your career end up there? Well, you decided uh, to be a professional basketball player. Why didn't you, with the blueprint, make it happen? Why didn't it shake? Rashad then responds, I'll still bust your ass. That's fine. Pause. <laughs> you, can, you, you can bust my ass. With a, if you hang your hat in this conversation when you're 6'4", 207, and you look like steroid Stan right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. If that's what you're you're gonna gonna Rashad Babanko. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. But when you do that, and you post me up for 11 straight points, I'm going to just get on the podcast and say, well, he has no three. Right. <laughs> well, he has no three. So, <laughs> yeah. come on, bro. Yeah, again, it, fans choose when they want to do this thing where it's like, oh, we want everyone to to go go for the Rion plus Ultra Dog. If Giannis is out here dunking on ninety nine percent of the league, then let Giannis dunk on ninety nine percent of the league, dog. Now, if he has an absence in his game, a hole in his game. Then sure, but if Caitlin Clark is just taking the threes, because damn it, <laughs> the shot's falling. You let the shot fall. Why the fuck you want her to do other shit if the shot is falling, and especially if it's a three point shot? Oh my god! But but I, I already know mm-hmm. some of y'all niggas right. Naruto believe it takes out here and er- want everybody to score every kind of bucket in a basketball game. They want a ten. They want a ten level scoring performance. And in a basketball game, one three, one mid range, one dunk, one alley oop, one one behind the back pass, one crossover, one hezzy, one in and out, one sham. Gosh, yeah, you know, like come on, bro. That's the next thing I'm gonna say. She don't dunk enough. I even see know. black Buddhism. His take is stupid, but a fault in her game is shot selection because she could get easier shots. She could, but she wants you to respect that three. Sometimes you do have to make, and and I've learned that from like LeBron. I've learned that from Kobe. I've learned that oh, from. Yeah, yeah. All the greats. I've learned from all the greats. The missus is a setup, man. Yeah, it's sometimes just to let you know. And mind you, even Gil, Gil, Gil broke it down like that when um he he took his turn. He was like, the difference between her and a page or whatever the case may be is, and and that's what I thought the same thing with like Juju when we had that when I had that stage after the game. The difference is, hey, first shot of the game because I look again. I look back at the Louisville game from last year. And the South Carolina game from last year, and the LSU game from last year, she threw. She did have an assist on the first play of each of those games, but if I'm not mistaken, she, they wanted to tip off on all three of those games. But their first possession, regardless, Caitlin took a, a deep ass three, and she might have made one 
of uh, of the three that I'm talking about, and even in that game right there, she might have made one. But that's just to let y'all motherfuckers know. Hey, it's coming from right here. So if you're not out far enough, I'm gonna let you know where it's coming from. And every single time, it's gonna get deeper. Oh, you at the hash? All right, cool. It's at the logo. You at the logo? Oh, shit, it's coming from half court. Cause this is where I'm coming from tonight. Y'all gotta stop, bro. Listen, yeah. man, I I love that women's basketball is now more mainstream than ever, but I do think if there's a negative to this whole thing. It has opened a slew <laughs> of bad takes from yeah. people who, and I'm not even going to act like I've watched women's basketball my whole life, but people acted like they've been watching women's basketball so closely for the last four to five years when um y'all just started last year the same the same year as me. All right, buddy, like, calm down, man. That yeah, Hey, know. I don't know. I don't know why people in... I don't know why people just are so upset to admit that they're just getting into shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I, I ain't, I can't name 1090s niggas that ain't a Hall of Famer. So if you put me on to a 90s game, guess who's gonna watch it? And I'm gonna be sitting there like, oh, okay. So that's how Nick Anderson plays. I just know he's a two-way guy on 2K. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it is what it is, bro. But some motherfuckers just can't admit these things, especially something that's fresh and new like women's basketball nowadays. Nah, dog. It's 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 corny. It's corny as fuck, bro. It's corny. And I'm and I'm putting up. Uh, I'm passing the ball too, just to let you know. All right. Next time you come down, I know you thought I was gonna lay that bitch. I'm oh yeah, that's it. right. I want to speak on that too. Yeah. Anybody mm -hmm. who's TSO SNS, y'all know my favorite Kobe series is 09. Donkey fuck Dwight Howard. <laughs> All if needed, because you know, yeah. But because he, he ain't know what to do. Defense nah, but no. But seriously, like he literally, yo, I'm a. It's me or Powell all night, every night. Shot the ball. Shot. It was literally pick and rolls all day, every day. Powell, you back up. It's going up. Y'all motherfuckers going to hit basketball reference. Brick, brick, brick. Kobe did not give a fuck. <laughs> Kobe did not care. You, you knew he was going to shoot the ball. I think that's also just how you have to play on in, in heliocentric offenses specifically, which is what Iowa State is. If they had more talent on the team, she wouldn't have to play like that, and I don't think she would. But because of the personnel... Same thing when we talk about Luka. Same thing when we talk about Harden. Hell, Steph Curry in 2021. Bro, because of the lack of help on that team, that star player needs to put an, a, an immense amount of pressure on the defense so that it opens up everyone else because they're going to need the open shots because they can't really create for themselves. So, I'm uh, going to read a couple of these hot takes in the in the thing right here before we get to Domo's guy. Um, Actually, okay. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Zan got three. Kendrick better than Cole right now. How? He, he only dropped like one song. One verse. I'm going to say one verse. What? Right now? How? All time? Sure, go for it. Um, What? What are we doing with these? Okay, okay. Uh, Young Stack 2 for my WWE guys. Roman losing Sunday does more for him. Um... It depends how you execute it. It's, it's always going to depend how you execute it. If you just have them lose clean, and especially if uh, the tag team, if Cody's tag team wins night one, it doesn't do that much more for him. But if it's on some betrayal shit, if it's on some Avengers assemble ass jumping shit, yeah, for sure it does. Yeah, it's not worried about it. Um, Dar Dar says you can't be a fitness influencer if you are taking steroids. I agree. Mm, I agree. Okay. Um. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. These are not real hot takes of the weeks, fellas. We're getting we're getting pretty cold in here. Old Last takes. one. K. D. Z. Burger King Whopper underrated at times. Underrated at times. Burger what? King Whopper. Underrated. I will always die by Burger King sucks. Oh man, that's crazy. Um, but uh, we're doing Burger King takes. Listen, chat. Fuck all that. Request to come up. I, I want to hear some some real time hot takes. Time. Everyone in, in the playback. In the playback. Request to come on stage on playback. And I, and what you got? And we're gonna send the actual link to the play um to the stream yard pull up. Matter of fact, get some people. In, they're not here. Well, well, let me let me while we do that, and, and we've got a couple more things to talk about for for. But I, I wanted to bring this up just because we're quick touching women's basketball. This don't even have to be a long one. I just want to know how you feel about this. Um, Ryan Russillo turned off Iowa, LSU to watch Trailblazers Magic. I think it's okay. You should think it's okay too. Now, 
on the start you do what you want to do on the surface level like on the surface level i really don't uh this doesn't matter i really don't even have an opinion i really don't have an opinion uh but i do want to share what his explanation was um I changed the channel at halftime, Russillo said. It's not for me. I just got frustrated. The same way I get frustrated when I watch the men's game where I can watch games and I'm like, where are the shot creators? Where are the guys that are going to get their own? Um, there, He continues on to say, there were some things in the game last night where I was like, all right, I'm going to watch Scoot Henderson try to get Jalen Suggs without a screen to hit the game winner at Orlando, Russillo said. I'm not going to lie to you about what it meant to me, but it shouldn't matter to you what it meant to me. The historic part of it is the most important part. Mm. What? Um, sounds yeah. like dicks up. This nigga's oh. cooking. So, yes, Rusillo prefers a 19-year-old NBA point guard shooting 38% from the field. Ah, oh, no, nah, that's crazy. That's a crazy. Oh, he, yeah, he cut <laughs> up. He cut up. Bias ass author. Bias ass author. But yeah, um, crazy. <laughs> overall, um, I just have – one maybe two questions one did he just was he asked or did he just announce this he just if he just came out the world and said hey i turned it off and that's okay too well, you know it's it's monday so or tuesday i guess because that was the day after the game and he's a basketball commentator and so exactly about that one. naturally it's just gonna have to be the thing that you t- well i would think that it would you would have to talk about it, but also you could just kind of just skip it. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's weird to announce. It's weird to announce. Okay, so my take is this then. Him announcing that he didn't watch the game, having a basketball platform, honestly, perfectly fine. However, and that's okay too. All right, you're just attention seeking. Attention or no further comments. Yeah, that's dick suck, bro. Could have done it every, any, any other night. You could have done it against, I don't know, UCLA or versus LSU or... I don't know, Stanford versus Iowa State. Just have to be that one, huh? Okay, eat dick, bro. I just I don't mind him turning it off to watch NBA basketball because he might prefer NBA basketball. Um, it, it, I have no problem with that. Once it becomes dick sucks when we're talking about, I prefer. It doesn't matter what it means to you. Whatever, it doesn't matter what the history means to you because I know what the history means to me. What fucking history are we talking about right now? Now is <laughs> It's getting crazy. <laughs> the history. Oh, is yeah. Uh, my bad. My bad. Though. Keep going. No, I'm just saying. I don't know what the history is. Like, can someone enlighten me? What happened? I think what he's referring to is he's one of those. I'm just a fan of good hoops, the highest level hoops, and I don't care about media narratives and storylines. I think that's what he was referring to. Ah, uh, so he would have raced you and you the other day or the other year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, hey, man. At the end of the day. Blazers versus Magic is greater quality basketball than Iowa versus LSU. I'm going to watch the better product. I think that's what he was uh, referring to. Way mm. off topic, Damo. PJ, PJ Washington tried to float the ball just now. Phew. <laughs> Ain't touch nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing but nothing. <laughs> he does he that on the short roll, man. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> And that's why he should work on it. I did, I, did, I did want to talk about uh, Donald's guy, LeVar Ball. Oh, Darvin Ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know if y'all know last week, I think it was last week, uh, LaMelo got shut down um, totally for the rest of the season uh, with the ankle injury and stuff like that. You know, trouble, troublesome year for the young kid. The young young god, you know, out in Charlotte. Uh, I want to say he's played like twenty games, maybe this season. 20 twenty-two games. games. Twenty-two, 22 games. games. Yeah, twenty-two games this season. This is his fourth year in the league. He was cooking um, too. Yeah, twenty twenty-four, um, four turnovers. My God, two steals, eight assists, five rebounds. Um, tumultuous season. Forty-three percent from the field is terrible, but you know, pretty bad season overall. Uh, for the Charlotte Hornets as an organization, yeah, you know they're they're trying to right the ship or whatever the case may be. But somebody found Levar Ball, and somebody decided to ask Levar Ball about the situation. You know, let's just start here. How are your sons doing? How are they doing just mentally? Obviously, dealing with injuries, and, and we all hope able to get back to a point where they can play. Well, mentally, they got a strong mindset. They ball. Well, they're they gonna come back, they're gonna rehab, they're gonna do their thing. Let's see, people like the narrative. Oh, you work the boys out too hard, that's why they hurt. 
No, the reason they hurt is because they got away from me. They start doing these rules. Yeah. If you keep running in heels, you're going to keep that power and that strength. No, you dad? With these rubber bands and doing this lightweight stuff, of course you're going to start breaking down. So you think that they've not been training hard enough in the NBA? They've been training hard enough. No, no, no. Because you condition your body for running and jumping. and you got to condition your legs. So that's why I always get my boys in them heels and running hard in them heels. That's, that that will make you run like a deer when you get on that court. So you won't be getting hurt. A lot of things have to do with them with them raggedy shoes that Melo be wearing. Mm, them shoes are not made the right way for him. You know you let me, from that. Let, <laughs> let me say, that guy, man. I one didn't realize how much I miss hearing Levar Ball I'm speak. Saying, bro. I heard him, but let me say, and I can hear this as a good or bad parenting thing or jab at Levar. I can hear it either way. There is something to say with. If you're used to doing something a certain way or training a certain way and then you stop, I feel like your body will have a reaction to that. And with him, he's had them niggas working out a specific type of way for decades, like their entire lives growing up. And now these niggas are starting to break. Even uh, Leangelo got hurt in fucking wherever he was. I think it was in Mexico. He signed in the pro league. He got hurt down in Mexico. He got shut down, had to re. So it's something, I think it is something to the fact that. They had a workout regimen their entire lives, and there was no history of the niggas being hurt and missing time and breaking down. And we had this conversation about how old players talk about practice and how NBA players train versus now. Niggas, was, niggas' bodies weren't breaking down when they were really practicing and really training compared to now. Everybody's load managing because they're hurt, and they're getting hurt because the training gets less. So I think it's something to it. I got no, I don't know, man. Shout I don't know. I mean, it, it sounds like he was just trying to shit on Puma because, you know, BBB kind of flopped. Which, you nice. know, that's his product. You know, that's, that's his baby. You know, his dream was for his kids to not only make it to the NBA, but to them to grow on their own brand with ownership. And, uh, nah, they just signed with Puma. Um, that's, re that's really my main takeaway with that. Um, I don't want to speak on too much on how... Who's really at fault for LaMelo or Lonzo's injuries? Just because correlation does not equal causation type shit. And I don't even know what's, what's causing it at this point. Is it something specific in the NBA that's going on? Is it the years of um, brutal training that LeVar put his kids through? That's what's causing this? I don't know. I, I truly don't know. So. That nigga's a bitch. Damn, I was about to invite him on the pod. Uh, no, LeVar. Uh... <laughs> Hello, if, uh, I see you, you know how to click a StreamYard link. Um, we would love to have you on the pod, Mr. LeVar Ball. BBB. Ooh, hey. That's uh, done, y'all. You let just move to the place. Um, for me, no. The reason why I was quiet, because I kind of just one. I kind of just 100% agree with Damo in the sense of if they're getting injured, it's probably because their body is used to that kind of training, perhaps, maybe. And um, that's just theories, though. Um... In general, I'm not mad at LeVar for thinking he could do better. I mean, you know, that's his kid. So, duh. Parents are always going to be a little delusional in how they think anything should progress with their kid, right or wrong. Um, and then do I want to villainize LeVar for this yet again? No. So that's out the window. And then in regards to how they're injured, uh, I think Chicago have terrorist doctors. So there's Lonzo. And then LaMelo, he just got hurt. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not that much for me to say outside of do I want to – villainize LeVar and that answer is no because it's LeVar Ball. If anything, nigga, what did you think he was going to say? And that is that is pretty factual there. I, I really don't have nothing to say about LeVar Ball. And what he thinks. LeVar Ball. <laughs> LeVar Ball is crazy. Gotta get him back in these ball shoes, man. Gotta get him back. Gotta get him back on the ball. Come on, dog. That's done. That time is done. Um, just worry about LiAngelo dropping merch. For whatever reason, why is Leangelo dropping merch? That's the real question. Why can't he drop merch? He got clout. <sighs> Anybody should have the right. Everybody got well, the right. Say, ain't, ain't you Mr. Market? He needs his own money, man. Yeah, man. That's oh. that's his face, brownie money. Yeah, that's disgusting. What is he? What is he? What is he, what is he I, just, I, I didn't know what he was marketing. I didn't he have his own money, bro. So he can have his own condo and shit on his own bread. It's still big baller stuff. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, what the war is busting ass, by the way. This is crazy. Oh, what you guys got for me? Game. What you guys got for me this week? What's what's new? What's true? Like what's around the, around the world? Um, I don't got none. Ice Spice was on Hot Ones. Did y'all watch that? <sighs> we have a, we could talk about anything in the world. Bet, 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 bet. I got a question. Then I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Gay son. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. Rate, rate the gripper one out of ten. Let's do the Q and A. We don't gotta do a three hour pod, bro. Please, (laughs) please, bro. Please. Oh. Let's do the Q and A. <laughs> I know he's frozen, so it was that that's what made me I know <laughs> I think I got an editor, man. <laughs> Cut this shit out. Oh. I think sometimes, sometimes we could just take a night off. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker said, what y'all got for me? What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I, I'd seen everybody. <laughs> Now, did I miss a screenshot? Was it was it funny? I didn't see the picture off. No <laughs> yeah, you look so concerned. Someone, someone screenshot that. I want to see. It. It was... Oh man, bring up Toon, man. Toon, how you doing? So I'm doing all right, man. What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's good, man? A little tuna fish. Yeah. yeah. So I really want to get on y'all about. So we can't say. Uh... A college player can't get better when she go to the M- the WNBA. Like what? She can't like, get better. He's talking, he talking about he basically Kaylin, like, with Rashad. not not in totally no, not because he was tripping. <laughs> but <laughs> if there are stuff that she can work on and get better as a player, and like if you take off the hate he was putting on there, because he was putting on some hate on there too. Because sometimes you, I learned to t- like the block out hate when people talk and listen to what they say. And, like, he was right. She could use a floater. Okay, I'll try. And y'all was in here yelling, oh, you passing too much. We was in here. We all, we all was yelling, don't pass it. We was yelling, don't pass it. So I was like. I don't know if we I, all were, but okay. I was going to say, you speak French, my nigga? Because I wasn't one of yeah, them. Yeah, that we uh, had people on stage that weren't us. I ain't going to lie. b was out here yelling, don't pass it. We, I'm b When that? I'm not b Souls either. Where's the tape? I mean. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm about to say he got one of the four. <laughs> I said I'm not B Souls. I was the only one that didn't give immediate one. pushback, I and I just had to be the one that said it, bro. All right, man. That's all, that's all I really want to talk about. Wait, like, is, she what, a college what? player. We can't talk about her getting better at, at the. Game I mean, we can't. Basketball. We can't. Why do you think she needs a floater? Just to have it, type shit. Does she not have be another weapon in her offensive arsenal? You said it'll be. awaken her offensive arsenal. Yeah, it could be another weapon in her offensive arsenal because when she gets to the next level, it's going to be more girls who can actually play defense and be athletic. So, and you just you just think now, mind you, if she goes out there because my right now she's averaging like thirty two points. And I think she's gonna cook still, but I'm just saying. Like, no, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just... be like the 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 WNBA banking on her being her their LeBron MJ. So that means I... that she gonna. I hope so. They better be. <laughs> they better be if they want to have a successful league. So you think their league they, is not successful? No, it's not. Like why you say that? I, mathematically speaking, it's not successful. What's the numbers? Math? The the dollars in and the dollars out ain't ain't even even and out. True. True. So you so let me. Do you feel that same way about like Walmart? I mean, I guess so. I'm pretty sure Walmart's making enough money. No, but they they their dollars out is more than their dollars in. That can't be true. Why can't that be true? They lying. Do you what about Twitch? What about Twitch? What about that? Do you feel that way about America as a business? 
Yes, but we don't. America's shady. Come on now. Wait, do you feel like America's successful? Yes or no? Huh? Come on now. Yes, America's successful. Wait, but why? The dollars out is more than the dollars in. All right, see, Omar, let's see. You're trying to gas me, and I'm not going to let it happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> we know the methods, oh. We're done with yeah. the gaslighting. Like, no, we're, done with the, we're done with the questions. <laughs> we're done with it. It's just a question. We're done with the two <laughs> questions. Nobody, nobody feels like she, I mean, you can improve. Yeah, improvement is f- perfectly fine. I, I just also want to ask, so she should get a post game too, right? Because that would just unlock her offensive arsenal. If she get in that post and work that bitch like Kobe, hey man, she the goat. You know, and then also, she should work on some box jumps, start dunking. Yeah, she should. She should be getting more athletic plays to the rim, Derrick Rose style type beat too, right? I mean, hey man, why she not? can get that under, up and under, reverse layup from one side to the other side. That's tough. And then probably deeper threes too, right? Yeah. Put them bitches from from the free throw. She line. get physically stronger, start becoming a better defender. Are we promoting stagnancy? I mean. No, we're not. I'm just mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. We, I don't. I don't understand how somebody mm-hmm. could take some things that we say sometimes, and then <laughs> Cruz said mm-hmm. she should try to get taller. I, th- I don't understand how people think. Uh, Do what Jared Milan did: lay up on the upside down on the bed, get a couple of inches. Come on. I don't get how people take what we say sometimes and then automatically jump to these conclusions. Why was the floater invented? Like, why do people shoot the floater? I mean, you know, when James was really getting getting buckets. He utilized the floater, but he also but why utilized though? the Why, though? Why? Why? Why does the floater exist? Damo said it. Why? You don't no know. way. You don't no know why way. A floater. You don't know why you shoot a floater? I'm some shit, but I know why I'd shoot a floater. Wait a minute. Why would you shoot a floater? Because it's a it's an easier side, and it's, it's an easier different. shot. Oh, you a really don't know. Oh, my God. You used wait. to get benched for taking floaters. You know, wait, right. wait, wait, wait. You, you just said it's an easier shot, but we also at the beginning of the pod talked about how a lot of players don't do it because they can't. So well, how is it an easier shot? Oh, it's an no, easier no, shot because no, no. you, you catch the defense off guard because you don't really know if the, the player going for the floater or not. You can say that about like a layup or you can say that about literally anything, right? No, you, you can't say that's that. That's a jump. Though. Yeah, when you pump you fake. Floater, mm. Like most of the time in the NBA, when an NBA player uses a floater, Normally, it's with the big man crashing to the basket, and you're getting warmer. They, they have to divide, they have to defend the oop or the floater. So, Damo, can you like help me? getting warmer. Ooh. I'll admit that, but ooh. Damo, can you help me? Right. Um, listen, when there's a big man at the in, in the paint that's good and prolific at blocking shots, you have a guy that can jump high, long arms, can reach up and block a shot in order to get around or over. The tall trees is to throw up a floater, so they can't reach it, and you can get the ball over the defender to score. And, and usually, this is like "quote unquote" reserved for shorter players, yes, right? This is a this is something typically known from players who are less athletic or smaller in physical stature. And not saying or they won't be taller. And less creative in the air, their athletic ability doesn't allow them I to said up less athletic. I said yeah. that, so I said less athletic. I put it out there. <laughs> not I mean, to the fat guys, man. That's all, man. Zero Just wanted to show love. And not and not saying not saying that like she won't see taller people, but like Caitlin Clark isn't necessarily short. Um, but I just, you don't even know what you're talking about. So what are you talking about? I'd even say a step mm-hmm. further before you go, Omar, I'd argue her floater mm-hmm. is from 30. <laughs> she, she just says, oh, I'm going to shoot over y'all. All right. <laughs> all right. It's okay. Too nigga I guess we don't see. The real test is going to be the South Carolina game. Because I think them girls are different. So. Ain't LSU a better defense? See. I'm the casual. No, but no, no, no. Is, no. Oh, South Carolina better? South Carolina is, now, mind you, mind you. you know, they better they, that thing. Now, let, me, let me say this. When South Carolina with. Camilla Cardosa, six seven. Mm-hmm. And I know Aaliyah. she got off last year. Yeah, she, she got, got off on, a, on, on her and Aaliyah Boston was the defensive player of the year last year. No, no, I was Cameron Brink. But she got off on her last year as well. So two two good defensive players. I, she didn't float her the ball back then. I don't know, dog. But I mean, yeah. we're gonna see where the coach draw this time. I'll see tune in about twenty minutes on this. <laughs> Are you starting <laughs> space? Space. Um, but that being said. We're out of here. Be so sick about it to people. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming through. Um, yo, subscribe to my new channel, man. Channel number four. Really five. May even be five. six. But uh channel four is on the way. All of Souls Twitch stream clips, non-NBA Twitch stream clips will be up on there. We've been working, man, so 
Go check that out. Okay. Okay. Say, say about the people, man. All right, people. I'm um, checking right now when the last time I've been live to determine if I'm streaming two or three times this weekend. Survey says, oh, nah, I streamed like a day ago. Y'all be all right, bro. I'm going to stream on a Friday. I'm going to stream on Friday, Saturday, and or Sunday. I'm going to stream twice. Um, might try to go out and have fun on one of the two days because I ain't going to lie. A lot of MVP content on the way. Yo, remember last time on Dragon Ball Z, I told you guys, yo, can't stand Russell Wilson? Oh, no. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> this guy's this. Ooh, this ooh, he's done. Um, and last things, lastly, speed running WrestleMania. Uh, 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 uh boom. Uh, night one. Uh, the rock, the rock tag team gonna win. Uh, 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 Seth, he's actually gonna retain because of CM Punk. On ironically, uh, 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 one more, one more, one more. Uh, Bailey deserves to win our riot, and Rhea deserves to win before our riot. Y'all have a good night. Okay. Uh, Damo, say goodbye to the people, man. All right, Chaz, me and my favorite midnight snack, and we will be back tomorrow. Couple announcements I got on my stream tomorrow, only Dom 197 on the purple app. Um, <clears throat> y'all pull up. Everybody in here, make sure y'all pull up tomorrow. Um, I got a couple announcements. Also, got a debate. Um, shout out Mookie. Mookie invited me to a little debate card he got. Mookie. About to catch another body, nigga. About to catch another body out here in these sports debates. It's easy, slight. Slight work. I'm streaming my POV, so that stream tomorrow will lead into my debate. Y'all gonna watch me add another one to the clip. Is there a time? Um, well, I'm gonna start streaming around like two, two thirty, and my debate should be somewhere between three, three thirty. I was trying to stream too. Let's see. Nah, stream stream Damo's uh, announcement. Okay. Type shit. Um, <laughs> that's so toxic. <laughs> anyway, um, new videos every single week for me, guys. Nothing out of the order every day, really. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And we will be specifically in uh, Discord tomorrow streaming the final four games. So we will, will see you, guys. huh? We will. I, I meant me, me and mm -hmm. the community. If you want to be there, yeah, you can be there. It's on you. Yeah, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend and oh, before before, before we go, uh, we will be there and we will be streaming uh, the first ever iteration of Gay Pop the Balloon or Find Love. My God, fantastic show! We love that content over there. Um, I'm gonna play two seconds of it, fellas. I'm sorry, y'all just y'all gonna have to get it. And, and and it may it may be paused. It may not be paused because they're gay. So maybe you can get it. All right. And well, we brown skin, so right. well we can go to the next person. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and move to the next person. Then. Okay. Match your type. Hello. Hey, you're back. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can you tell the audience what your name is? What's up, everybody? I'm Teddy. Okay. Hey, Teddy. Um, and Teddy, you popped your balloon today. Why did you pop your balloon? Um, just not my type, to be honest. Well, I feel like you're very well dressed. You look very clean and very nice, but no, I just rather go for my type. Okay, thank you. Damn. Um, I mean, I don't want to be bold, but he my type. Oh, uh, well, can you just? That's the nigga right bold. next to him. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, pretty fucking bold. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know what you do after that, but uh, we will definitely find that out tomorrow. I might have some gay guys over to watch that with me and my girlfriend, so I don't know. Just might might do a real bit. Did I announce on this pod that Clippers video got passed up, or was that my stream? You did. You did. Yeah. You announced it on the pod. Cool, cool, cool. Um. Anyway, take care. Stay blessed. Bye, guys! Peace! Shout out to